Live from the Maverick Center in West Valley City, it's Utah Grizzlies hockey. As it's the second of a three-game series between the Grizzlies and the Idaho Steelheads. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Utah Grizzlies hockey. I'm Tyson Whiting. It's the second of a three-game set for the Grizzlies. It's the second of six straight here at Maverick Center, the final home game of the regular season. Well, on Wednesday night, the Grizzlies lost 6-2 to to the Idaho Steelheads, and really the big period for Idaho was the second frame where they outscored the Grizzlies 4-2. It was a very balanced attack by the Idaho uh, forwards as Ty Pelton Bice and Jordan Kawaguchi each had one goal and one assist. Star defenseman for Idaho, Jake Murray, had one goal and two assists, and goaltender Brian Thompson was solid to net, stopping 32 of 34. Idaho's got the number one power play unit in the league, Then they didn't have a single power play all night on Wednesday, but they got a 6-2 to two victory. The Grizzlies did have a shot advantage of 34-23 to 23 in Wednesday night's games. Grizzlies had a lot of chances, but Thompson made some saves on a few occasions, and for Idaho, they buried a lot of their big scoring chances. Utah got second period goals from Aaron Aragon and Kyle Mayhew. Aragon, as well as Luke Manning, were two of Utah's best forwards on Wednesday. Well, the Grizzlies traditionally have done a good job protecting home ice, and they're certainly going to need to in order to secure a playoff spot. There are seven games left in the regular season, and five of them will be here at Maverick Center, but they're facing two of the top teams in the league. Idaho's got the third best record in the league, and that's the Grizzlies' opponent today and tomorrow. Next week, Tando has Kansas City Mavericks come to town. Kansas City has the best record of anybody in the league as they have 100 standings points. Idaho is in second in the Mountain Division with 90 standings points, and they've been two of the three or four best teams overall in the league. So it should be a fun one here. we got a different goaltending matchup tonight. Dante Genuzzi will get the start for the Grizzlies. He'll be going up against Idaho's Jake Kiley, who's making his 13th start of the season. We mentioned the Grizzlies protecting home ice, and they've done a good job protecting leads here at home. After all, they are 10-0 at home when uh, leading after one period. So we'll see if the Grizzlies have some Maverick Center magic in them here tonight as a good crowd is filing in here. Remember, it's an AFCU Friday where tickets start just $10 when you pay using your AFCU debit or credit card at the Maverick Center box office. We'll be doing a little bit of scoreboard watching here tonight. The Grizzlies are in fourth place in the Mountain Division with 61 standings points. They are two points behind Tulsa for third place. Tulsa is at home facing Wichita tonight. Uh, the Grizzlies are four points in front of Allen for, four, for fourth place. Allen is in fifth place, four points behind Utah. Allen is at Rapid City tonight. We'll keep an eye on that game. That game will get started about five minutes before the Grizzlies contest begins. Iowa is at Kansas City, and tonight Kansas City possibly could clinch the division title. So it's going to be an interesting one here at Maverick Center, second of a three-game set. And for you, Tom, we'll see if Dante Genuzzi will come up big in net. A couple of Grizzlies who have really contributed as of late. Brandon Cutler's got a point in six of his last seven games. Dylan Fitz has 11 goals and seven assists in his last 16 games. And Kyle Mayhew has been outstanding for the Grizzlies. He's got a point in six of his last seven. So it's going to be a fun one here tonight. Grizzlies and the Idaho Steelheads face off in about 15 minutes from now. we got the game right here on Flow Sports as well as audio coverage on YouTube. Our homes for Grizzlies hockey all season long. When we come back, the Grizzlies signed two players who are going to be making their professional debuts tonight. One forward, one defenseman. We'll tell you who they are on the other side. We're in business on a Friday night, and you're listening to the Grizzlies Hockey Network, presented by Rio Tinto Kennecott. Maverick's new Bean to Cup machines always deliver a freshly ground cup of coffee on demand so you can enjoy any of our premium roasts at their best, day or night, hot or iced. Enjoy a fresh cup today. Since 1939, America First has helped people start businesses, buy homes and cars, and achieve their financial goals. Today, our top priority is still the financial success of you and your family, which is why we're giving new members $100 when they sign up for a basic savings and checking account and another $100 when they upgrade to premium checking and enroll in and use direct deposit. So head to AmericaFirst.com today and join the credit union that always puts its members first. At Black Bear Diner, you always get more. More choice. More amazing food. More value. So get more. And get it today. Black Bear Diver. Welcome back to Utah Grizzlies Hockey. I'm Tyson Whiting. 
Yesterday, the Grizzlies signed defenseman Luke Salem, who's going to be making his professional debut tonight wearing number five for the Grizzlies. Salem played his college hockey at St. Lawrence University in four seasons in college. He scored 18 goals and 37 assists in 128 games. Salem's best statistical season came as a junior, which was the 2022-23 season where he led the team with 10 goals and 17 assists in 36 games. And during that year, he also uh, led his team with a plus 12 rating. Uh, Luke was the captain for St. Louis University during his senior season, which just com- just concluded the 2023-24 campaign where he scored three goals and five assists in 38 games. Salem resides in Santa Monica, California. We mentioned he's going to wear number five for the Grizzlies. He is listed at 5'10 and 175 pounds. But he's not the only Grizzly making his pro debut tonight. As earlier today, the Grizzlies signed forward Blake Wells who comes from the college ranks. Wells started his college career at UMass Lowell, and in four seasons from 2019 through 2023, he scored seven goals and 11 assists. Wells had a combined plus 13 rating during his four seasons at UMass Lowell, including a plus 11 rating in the 2021-22 season. Wells was an assistant captain for UMass Lowell during the 2022-23 season. He transferred to American International College as a graduate transfer and had four goals and six assists and a plus three rating in 32 games uh, for AIC earlier this year. Well, he's a pretty big guy, list, listed at 6'2 and 200 pounds. And during warmups, he looked every bit of that. So we'll see Blake Wells tonight. He'll be wearing number 54, and he will be one of 11 forwards for Ryan Kanasiewicz's crew tonight. We will also see Luke Salem. LUC is his first name, and he will be paired up with Quinn Wickers on the night. It's Grizzlies and the Stillheads for Utah. They've got to find a way to slow down Idaho's high-powered offense as the Stillheads have 276 goals through 65 games this season at a rate of 4.25 per contest. Kansas City, who is a Grizzlies opponent next week, is also averaging 4.25 goals per game, and they are the top two teams in the Western Conference. So it's going to be interesting. The one thing for the Grizzlies, they were able to get a lot of scoring chances, especially in the first two periods of Wednesday night's game, and they did outshoot these stillheads 34 to 23. You know, we've always mentioned here, especially here at home, the importance of the Grizzlies getting off to a fast start, and I don't think that they can be understated. Idaho's got a record of 31, 3, 1, and 2 when scoring first this season. The Grizzlies have been outstanding when scoring first in their own right as Utah is 21-4-2 and when scoring first, and they are 15-0-1. They've got a standing point in all 16 games at Maverick Center when they have scored first. So it's going to be critical for the Grizzlies to get off to a fast start here tonight against a high-powered Idaho offense. When we come back, we'll go over the starting lineups for both teams. We're in business on a Friday night here in the middle of a three-game series. And if you're in the West Valley area, come on down and enjoy some Grizzlies hockey with us. If not, obviously, we, we got the game right here on Flow Sports and audio coverage on YouTube, our, home, our homes for Grizzlies hockey all season long. We'll come back and give you the lineups for both teams. This is the Grizzlies Hockey Network. Why is Jerry Siner the number one Kia store in the Salt Lake region? Selection. We've got over 350 new Kias to choose from. Savings. Shop over 40 new Kia Sportage models and save up to $2,500 off when you buy. Jerry Siner has been the area's most trusted automotive source for over 40 years. Little wonder, then, how we've made thousands of friends to last a lifetime. Jerry Siner, Kia, South Jordan. Welcome back to Maverick Center. I'm Tyson Whiting here in the second of a three-game set between the Grizzlies and the Idaho Stillheads. It's the 11th meeting between the clubs this year. Utah is 2-8 and eight against the Stillheads. Both of the Grizzlies' wins against Idaho came in Boise at Idaho Central Arena. Let's go over the starting lineups for both teams. First for the visiting Idaho Stillheads, who have a record of 43-18-2-2. They are 24-9-0-1 oh, on the road. They are led by head coach Everett Sheen, who's the reigning league coach of the year. His assistant is Keenan Kelly. 
One notable absence of the Idaho lineup is Matt Register. He is missing his first game all season. Register has played in over 700 pro games. He has nine goals and 48 assists in, in 65 games. He has 57 points. He's got a plus 17 rating. Register is out of the Idaho lineup. Non-injury related. Apparently, he's just getting a little bit of rest here towards the end of the regular season. And so Register and their captain, A.J. White, they're the only players who have appeared in more than 60 games for Idaho this year. White will be in the Idaho lineup. He won't be a starter, but White has 24 goals and 35 assists in 64 games. So watch out for A.J. White. He's been around the pro market for quite a while. He's been the Stillheads captain for many years now. He'll be wearing number 18. Starting forwards, Connor Milamak wearing number 11, the son of the Idaho Stillheads legend, Jeremy Milamak. Uh, he is 6'1", 205 pounds. He's got four games of professional experience. As he came from the college ranks, he has 10 penalty minutes and a minus two rating. Milamak will be lined up next to Jade Miller. He's making his 31st appearance this season. Miller wearing number 26, has five goals and seven assists and an even plus minus rating. We will also see Willie Neerham in the starting lineup. He's got 16 goals and nine assists in 45 games. And Neerham is 6'4 and 225 pounds. So the starting forwards once again are Millimock, uh, Miller, and Neerham. We will also see Wade Murphy, who's got 24 goals and 37 assists this season. Keaton Mascio Donato has 22 goals in 42 games. Uh, we will also see Francisco R. Curry, who's got 20 goals this season, as well as Ty Pelton Bice, who's got a plus 20 rating and 55 points in 51 games. We had mentioned A.J. White, who's making his 65th appearance this season. Demetrius Kumatsis, the Arizona State product, is in there. He did not play on Wednesday. He'll be one of the forwards. Will Merchant, wearing number 28, will also be in there. He has seven goals and 18 assists. And Jordan Kawaguchi, who had one goal and one assist last night. Scratches for Idaho include Sam Sternshine, Lyndon McCallum, Colton Keller, Matt Register, and defenseman Ben Zalotti. Starting in net for the Stillheads is Jake Kiley, who's making his 13th appearance this year. Kylie's got a record of 8-4 and four with a 3.61 goals against average and 899 save percentage. As I mentioned before, Idaho's one of the more high-powered offenses in the league, averaging 4.25 goals per game. Now let's get to the starters for the homestanding Utah Grizzlies who are wearing a black jersey with white numbers and professional green trim. They are led by third-year head coach Ryan Kanaswich, who's the all-time leader in Utah Grizzlies history in goals, assists, and points. Utah's got a record of 29, 33, and 3 this season. They are 19, 10, and 2 at home. Starting a net for the Grizz is going to be Dante Januzzi. This will be his 30th appearance this season. Dante's got a record of 12 and 16 with one shutout, a 3.52 goals against average, and 894 save percentage. Januzzi listed at 6'1 and 190 pounds. He's a first-year pro who played his junior hockey career with the Portland Winterhawks over the last five years. The starting defensive pairing, Kyle Mayhew, who leads all league rookie defensemen with 50 points, 14 goals, and 36 assists. He'll be paired up with the captain, Josh Wesley, who leads all league defensemen with 17 goals on the season. The other defensemen include Quinn Wickers as well as Luke Salem, who just signed yesterday. Salem's making his professional debut. He's a Santa Monica, California native. He played at St. Lawrence University over the last four years. And we'll also see Liam Dennison and Keone Tech Sheriff paired up tonight. Dennison is in his fifth professional game, and Keone Tech Sheriff is making appearance number 42 on the season. Starting forwards, Brett Stapley will be in there. He has 22 goals and 45 assists in 60 games. He is seventh in the league in points and assists this year. He is 5'11 and 190 pounds, a second year pro out of the University of Denver. You we'll also see Brandon Cutler in there. Cutler had an assist last night. He has uh, Wednesday night. He has 31 goals and 26 assists in 65 games. Cutler has a point in six of his last seven games. And we'll also see Luke Manning in there. Manning in his first year as a pro. He just signed with the Grizzlies a few weeks ago out of St. Thomas University. Manning has two assists in seven games, including one helper on Wednesday night. So starting forwards again are Stapley, Cutler, and Manning. We will also see Adam Berg paired up with Cole Gallant and Alex Bocage. Aaron Aragon was Utah's best player on Wednesday. He had one goal and a plus-two rating. 
The Iron Man, Tyler Penner, of course, he's going to be in there. He hasn't missed a game since he started the 2021-22 season. And Dylan Fitz has been as hot as any Grizzlies forward. Fitz has 11 goals and 7 assists in his last 16 games. You also see Mick Messner, the Merrimack product. Messner was a college teammate with defenseman Liam Dennison. Messner has 14 goals and 20 assists this season. And making his pro debut is Blake Wells, 6'2", 200 pounds. He'll be wearing number 54 for the Grizzlies. Wells played this season at America International College, AIC, where he had four goals and six assists and a plus three rating. Before that, spent four seasons at UMass Lowell. So it's the Grizzlies and the Stillheads. Idaho wearing the same jersey for the second straight night, which is kind of a either silver or gray jersey with black on the shoulders, white trim, and black numbers. We'll come back and have face-off here at Maverick Center. This is the Grizzlies Hockey Network. Smith's always gives you more ways to save on top of our lower than low prices. And when you download the Smith's app, you can enjoy over $500 in savings every week with digital coupons and earn fuel points to save up to a dollar per gallon at the pump. With a Boost membership, you'll save even more with double fuel points and free delivery. Discover more ways to save big every day. Smith's. Tires. I'm a confident vaccine driver, but mom's a little stressed about spending. Remember, breathe in. Now watch your speed and breathe out. Good. Even though we're watching our wallets, Les Schwab is still watching out for our safety. So it's right here. Help keep drivers and backseat drivers safe with Les Schwab Tires. Why is Jerry Siner the number one Kia store in the Salt Lake region? Selection. We've got over 350 new Kias to choose from. Savings. Shop over 40 new Kia Sportage models and save up to $2,500 off when you buy. Jerry Siner has been the area's most trusted automotive source for over 40 years. Little wonder then how we've made thousands of friends to last a lifetime. Jerry Siner Kia, Salt Lake. Welcome back to Utah Grizzlies Hockey. We got our national anthem here on a Friday night at Maverick Center. At Black Bear Diner, you always get more. More choice, more amazing food, more value. From huge breakfasts to delicious lunches and hearty dinners, Black Bear Diner has more for you. So get more when you want it, the way you want it, and get it today. Good old-fashioned family food, Black Bear Diner, Black Bear Diner. 
It's a great night for hockey. It's two big standings points are on the line as the Utah Grizzlies take on the Ido Steelheads for the 11th time this season. I'm Tyson Wagen. It's certainly a big one for the Grizzlies as they are two points behind Tulsa for third place in the Mountain Division. They are four, fourth, four points behind fifth place Allen in the Mountain Division and Rapid City and Wichita with a strong winning streak to end the regular season could end up jumping into the playoff race. For the Grizzlies, they lost 6-2 to two on Wednesday night, and they're looking for, for a little bit of revenge tonight, and they're looking for their first victory against Idaho at home this season. Dante Genuzzi gets a start in net. This will be his 30th appearance of the season. He's got a record of 12-16 and 16 with a 3.52 goals against an average and 894 save percentage. In net for Idaho is going to be Jake Kiley, who's 6'2 and 201 pounds. This will be his 13th appearance this year. He's got a record of 8-4 and four with a 3.61 goals against average and an 899 save percentage. Referee tonight is Hunter Mottinger. The linesmen are Tyler Keston and Craig Peterson. Grizzlies have Stapley taking the face off. He's out there with Cutler and Manning. Wesley and Mayhew, the defensive pairing. Jade Miller will take the draw for Ido. He's out there with Willie Niram and Connor Millimock. The defensive pairing is Reese Harsh and Patrick Kudla. Draw one by the Stillheads. They skate from left to right as we see it from high top section 114 as Willie Naram dumps it in from center ice. Far side, Stapley spins along the boards towards the near side. Luke Manning will dump it in. Cutler chasing after it. Near side, Cutler gets it. Skates around Kylie's net. Feeds it up top to Wesley. One timer is blocked away. Stapley looking for it. Couldn't handle it. Matt and Manning gets hit in the back. And the puck goes towards the far corner. Stapley centers to Manning. Don't take a lefty shot. It goes high as it ricochets off the glass. Near him. Over towards Millimock, who challenges with Mayhew. Near goal line, Cutler dance around as Cutler shadowing him like a hawk. Cutler feeds up top to Mayhew, and it skips out of the zone as it went over a stick. Mayhew over in the Grizzlies zone, gets spun around by Niram. Now Mayhew delivers a good side check on Niram. Puck ends up squirting towards the net, where it's taken by Wesley, who skates around the net. As we're about a minute in, no score. Grizzlies one shot. Idaho's yet to take one. Cole Gallant centers to Adam Berg. He'll take a lefty shot that goes wide. Berg gets it back in the far corner. He's out there with Cole Gallant and Alex Bocage. Now Bocage in the corner gets pushed by A.J. White. Now Kanadi throws Bocage along the glass behind Idaho's net. As action in the far corner. They feed it up top to Luke Salem in his first professional shift. Salem over towards Bocage. Salem 5'10", 175 pounds behind the net. Uh, Jake Murray, who had one goal and two assists, will push it towards the near side for Kawaguchi. He lets it go to center ice. Bokaj gathers it. And he pivots back towards the Grizzlies bench. Now he gets over to Salem wearing number five. He'll move it to his left for Wickers. He taps it ahead. Adam Berg will throw it in. As Salem and Wickers come off the ice after their first shift. As Tyler Penner along the near side action in the Idaho zone. Liam Dennis left side. Lefty shot goes wide. A.J. White gets the skipping puck. He'll move it ahead to Mashal Donato. Passes wide of the mark. Dennison, along the near boards, advances to Tech Sheriff, who flubs it in as Kylie stays in net. Rodzinski over with Fitz. Fitz trying to center to bounce off the skate and rolls towards a far circle. Tech Sheriff, high slot, lefty shot is blocked. Now Fitz with a righty shot is blocked away by Kylie as Aragon, far side, trying to get to Tech Sheriff. And a good poke check by Idaho. And number 17, Ty Pelton Bice. Idaho feeds off the near wing boards and all the way deep in the Grizzly zone. Icing is on the Stillheads with 17.43 left in the first. Everybody make your pick to the Optum first goal of the game. Who's scoring first for Utah tonight? I'm not sure. I'm think, I think I'm going to go with uh, Adam Burke. Burke's got 10 goals and 13 assists this season. Mick Messner will take the drives out there with Blake Wells, but Wells is on the right wing, and Alex Bokosh for Wells. It's his professional debut, and this is his first shift. He played at AIC earlier this season. Earlier before that, played at UMass Lowell for four years. Grizzlies have it deep in their own zone. As Josh West over to Mayhew, Grizzlies skate from right to left as we see it from high top section 114. Mayhew near side over to Bokosh. He'll pivot and feed it to his right for Wesley. Who trying to get to Wells. Pass goes incomplete. Grizzlies are called for icing as Wesley was looking for Wells around center ice. and Wells couldn't reach it. I will say Blake Wells looks like a pretty big guy at 6'2 and 200 pounds. Fans still filing in here, and it looks like a good crowd is settling in here for the middle of a three-game series. Alex Bocage will take the draw against Ty Pelton Bice over in the far circle of the Grizzlies zone. Utah's taking the first two shots of the night. 
Skillheads win the draw. Cuddle up. Centers to Murphy. He'll take a righty shot. And the blocker is saved by Januzzi. That's the first shot taken by Idaho. And it's a great A chance by Wade Murphy. As Grizzlies get it ahead towards Wells, whoever skates it. As Ty Pelton Vice left wing crosses center ice. As both teams change up around him. Vice well, loses it. As Salem was able to get a stick in the way. As the puck ends up in the near side for Reese Harsh. He'll feed it back towards Kylie as it goes towards Patrick Cudlew, who lumbers out to Neutrice. He'll cross center, right wing, and he'll loft it in. As the puck kept the ops behind Januzzi's net, Wickers feeds it to the near side for Cutler. As he'll advance it to Stapley, who throws it between his legs for Salem. Salem, good skater, skates towards the right wing, takes a lefty shot that's blocked. Salem gets the back, tries to feather it out in front to Stapley, who wasn't looking. Cutler near side, gets bounced off the boards by Niram. As Kumatsis gets tripped up, puck ends up back towards Cutler. As the stillhead goes down, Cutler in the near corner gets it towards Manning over to Stapley. He'll take a shot. He scores! Brett Stapley gets his 23rd of the year. And the Grizzlies get on the board first with 16-18 uh, left as Brett Stapley gets his 23rd of the season. Where the puck just kind of bounced around there. Went to Stapley in the near circle. He went stick side past Jake Kiley. As Grizzlies, for the first time this series, get on the board first. Cutler and Manning are going to get the assist. And that's one that I imagine Jake Kiley would like to have back. As Stapley just fired it past Kiley's stick side. For Stapley, it's a 66, 68th point this season, 23 goals and 45 assists. As Ido has it in the attack zone, near side. Nasha Donato spins it around the boards. Bokaj gets hit by Miller. Puck hit the ops out to center ice. As Grizzlies enter from the right. Tight Shara skates towards the corner. He'll dump it off the end boards. Burr chases after it. As Gallant centers the tight Shara lefty shot goes wide. Puck ends up back towards Galani. Feeds over to Dennison. Across the tight Shara. One timer goes wide. And still has to get it off the boards. Idaho advanced it to center ice. Now they step over the line left wing. Idaho chips it across. Master Donato all alone will take a shot. Saved by Januzzi. Great stop by Dante. Idaho's taking two shots. They're both great A chances. One by Murphy and Master Donato about 15 seconds ago. Dennison crosses center ice. No fly it in, and he'll come off at the end of his shift. Mayhew's out there with Wesley. Nick Canati throws it around his net. Fitz ships out front to Penner. Just couldn't handle it as Penner looking for his 10th of the year. As Idaho gets it back to the Utah line. May Hugh pivots, gets it over to Aragon off the near boards. Now near side, fits over in the circle, take a righty shot, saved by Kylie. Rebound shot to score! Tyler Penner gets his 10th of the year, and five minutes in, the Grizzlies are taking a 2 nothing lead. Boy, Fitz took the initial shot in the near circle and just bounced off of Kylie. Two Grizzlies were over there looking for the rebound. Both Penner and Aragon were out there, and it's Tyler Penner getting his 10th of the year. The Grizzlies' Iron Man extends Utah's lead. Stapley scored 332 in, and a minute and a half later, it's Tyler Penner getting the goal with Dylan Fitz picking up uh, his 19th assist of the season. As Fitz took the shot, it bounced off of Kylie, and Tyler Penner was just in the right place at the right time. Idaho wins the draw. They skid into the attack zone. Murphy loses it. Now it goes over to Cole Gallant. He skates down the middle. Gallant splits the double team. will take a righty shot. Saved by Kylie. Well skates in. Shot. Saved by Kylie. Who dives and holds on. Nick Messner got pushed by, by a Murphy at the whistle. As Kylie holds on. But he's allowed quite a few rebounds here early on. As Utah leads the shot count 6-2. to two, And they also lead the game 2 nothing. Penner with the goal. Fitz and Aragon with the assist. 4-45 into the first period. So the Grizzlies score two goals a minute and 13 apart. A lot of people from the Los Angeles area apparently showing up to the game. A lot of late arrivals. Draws game in the far circle of the Idaho zone. Grizzlies have a 2-0 lead on goals from Brett Stapley and Tyler Penner. Draw one by Utah. Josh Wesley, right side. Rolls along the boards. Cuddle in the far corner as it's lifted by Blake Wells in his first professional game. Messner skates towards the far side centers and it's picked off by Bice who moves it ahead. Idaho, Nick Canati, make that Curry Skates down the middle, take a shot and he scores as Francisco R. Curry gets his 21st of the year as he got a breakaway skating behind the Grizzlies defense. A lot of Stillheads fans in attendance. They celebrate behind their bench in section 101 as R. Curry just skated down the middle. 
Glided the puck towards his left and fed it over Januzzi. So Francisco Arcuri gets his 21st of the year, and we've seen so much action here in the first five and a half minutes of the contest. We've already seen three goals, and the seats aren't yet warm. As Grizzlies get goals from Stapley and Penner, and Francisco Arcuri gets his 21st of the year. Ido across the center ice, far side, by stumps it in. Januzzi drops it for Wickers. He skates towards the far corner. He stops. And he'll feed it back to Luke Salem. Salem, the St. Lawrence product. He gets blasted along the near boards. Now it goes back towards Salem. Manning in the area. Now get rolls to Stapley in the near side. Stapley pitches ahead. Looking for Manning. It's taken away by Kudla, who skates down the middle. Kudla drops off in the right point for Merchan after stepping over the line. As Nilamak over to Kudla. He gets hit up high by Salem. And that's going to be a penalty as Kudla holding his face. Elbowing is going to be the call. As Luke Salem, who goes 5'10 and 175 pounds, picks up his first professional penalty. Idaho's going to be on the power play when we come back. 13.57 left in the first. We've already seen three goals. Brett Stapley scored 3.32 in. Tyler Penner, 4.45 in. Extended to Utah's lead to 2-0. Francisco R. Curry got his 21st of the year with an assist from Ty Pelton Bice. 5.27 in. Luke Salem gets his first pro penalty. He gets two minutes for elbowing. Idaho's on the power play when we come back. It's Grizzlies two, and this still adds one. From commercial to recreational truck accessories, Mountainland Truck Outfitters has got what you need. Flatbeds, spray and bed liners, lifts and leveling kits, wheels and tires. Mountainland Truck Outfitters proudly uses a brand you know and trust. And with our experienced, knowledgeable, and friendly staff, your visit here will be informative and enjoyable. Stop into our convenient location in Provo at 265 South 100 West or call 801-225-4637 to get a quote for your fleet or individual truck. Mountainland Truck Outfitters. Luke Salem gets two minutes for elbowing in his professional debut as Idaho's got the number one power play unit in the league at 28.9%. They go to work. Utah leads 2-1. to one. About six minutes into the game, Idaho wins the drop. Reese Harsh, who scored Idaho's first goal on Wednesday, will push to his left. Now to the far goal line. Shot saved by Januzzi. Rebound shot goes wide on the second look that was taken by Willie Neerham. Neerham gets the puck far corner. He feeds it up top. As Kudla dances around towards the far circle, now he shakes and bakes, make that Kawaguchi who gets it up top to Harsh. Back to Kawaguchi, far side, across the Mastro Donato, who pivots, skates back towards the right point, and he'll feather it to his left for Kawaguchi. Skates towards the far circle, take a lefty shot, and it's the post. They hit the post in the iron unkind. Mastro Donato near a circle. He'll skate towards the near goal line. Now he gets it up top to Reese Harsh. Harsh. Over to Mastro Donato as he'll nudge it across towards the middle. It's taken away. Mick Messner's got three shorthanded goals this season. He crosses center ice and he'll loft it in towards Kylie as Kylie gathers it and keeps play alive as both teams will change up skaters. We're about seven minutes into the game and halfway through Idaho's first power play of the contest. Utah leads two to one. Idaho re enters from the far side. They'll feed it across off the boards. Mayhew clears it back to center. Ty Pelton Bice resets as he's back in the stillhead zone. Idaho skating from left to right. Stillheads reshuffle the deck personnel wise as Patrick Cudlin near side gets to center. He'll drop it off to his left. Our Curry enters, skates down the middle. He'll skate towards the right side, stops, skates back towards the near point. He feeds it to Cudla. And so get to the far side as Kawaguchi over towards Cudla. He gets it back towards Ty Pelton Bice over to our Curry. One timer, he didn't get much on it. As Puck ends up in the far corner, bounced off of Bice. As Puck up the ops towards Aragon and New tries, and he'll dump it in. As Luke Salem's got 20 seconds left in his penalty, as he got two minutes for elbowing. Murphy over to his left for Merchant. Merchant over the line. He stops along the near boards, feeds it to his left, as it still heads far circle, trying to feather it out in front. Nobody home. Aragon will fly all the way towards Jake Kiley. Luke Salem's coming out of the box right now, and it's a successful penalty kill for the Grizzlies. It's 2-1 Utah, eight minutes in. And as it still heads, carried out to center ice near side. Jade Miller dumps it in. He gets around Wickers, and he pushes Teixeira. As Wickers throws to the far side, Bocage across to Manning, who lays it for Stapley across the center ice. Stapley's the opt-in first goal of the game score tonight. Over to Manning, who loses it. As Idaho, two-on-two, across two the center ice. As Millamock. Enters the zone from the far side, skates towards the corner, takes a lefty shot, saved by Januzzi, and Dante holds on as Milamok didn't get much on the shot taken just around the far corner, deep in the Grizzly zone. 11.28 left in the first. We're just getting underway, and we've seen so much action here early on, so grab some chips and dip in a beverage of your choice and enjoy a little bit of Friday with us. 
Dan sticking up a Let's Go Grizzlies chant. It looks like we got a pretty good Friday night crowd. Jade Miller will take the draw against the West, Western Michigan product, Cole Gallant. As a draw, one by Utah. Josh Wesley, far corner gets it. As Grizzlies skate from right to left. Left wing pass goes towards Berg, but he couldn't reach it. As the tattoos off the near boards and all the way down for an icing call. As we get a whistle with 11.20 left in the first. Obviously, throughout the night, we'll do some scoreboard watching. Uh, the Rapid City and Allen game, as well as Wichita, who's at Tulsa tonight. For the Grizzlies victory and a Tulsa regulation loss. Grizzlies could jump to a tie for third in the Mountain Division with Tulsa. Ido wins the draw in the attack zone. Miller tries to lay it out in front and a bounce off of Januzzi. Grizzlies will fly it out to center ice. And the puck skips in the stillhead zone near side. Nick Kennedy pushes across to Jake Murray. Murray gets put gets blasted by Adam Berg as the puck will curl around Idaho's net near side. Nick Kennedy with good speed will advance to center ice as Milamak dumps it in. Januzzi behind his net will fling it towards the near side. Adam Berg in the area as well as Mayhew. Mayhew avoids a stick that was flying towards him. Now the puck goes towards Mayhew, gets to Wesley far side. He'll pitch it ahead as Gallant crosses center ice. No backhanded in as the puck gets some air under it. Chasing after it's Trevor Zins, number two. Zins, one of six defensemen for Everett Sheen tonight. Left wing pass connects as Idaho enters the zone. Kawaguchi skates towards the far corner. He's being shadowed by the six-year pro Teixeira. Kawaguchi tries to reverse back towards the far side. Teixeira holds him up. Kamatsi gets up top to Zins. Who moves it towards a high slot. Rodzinski takes a lefty shot that goes wide as he puts a serious dent into the end boards. Zins right side, dances around. Now throw it across. It's taken away by Stuck and Stapley. Stapley dance around the Utah line as he'll skate towards the near boards. Stapley fakes it is right. He'll skate across center ice. He gets around white. Stapley near a circle, dazzles with the puck as he'll throw it to the end boards. He loses his balance. He'll feed it to the near side for Messner. Takes a lefty shot that goes wide. Luke Salem gathers it, wearing number five. He'll center it to Messner. One-timer goes wide. Puck ends up back towards Salem in the far corner over to Messner. Far side shot. Saved by Kylie. Rebound goes to Wickers in the left point. They'll feed it to the corner from Messner, the Merrimack product. He gets pushed by Kawaguchi. Stapley around Idaho's net towards Fitz in the far corner. Fitz will tap it back. It hits a stanchion. Trevor Zins gets it behind Idaho's net. He'll throw it to Rodzinski far corner. Now Idaho gets pushed by Salem. Taking it is Messner. Right side. Lefty shot goes wide. Fitz near side, looked to center to Stapley, couldn't reach it. Nastro Donato, far corner, loses the puck. As Stapley gets it in the far circle, take a righty shot that goes wide. Stapley looking for his second of the night. As the fans stomp their feet, we've had a lot of action here in the first 11 minutes. Idaho will bounce it, and it flies all the way out towards center ice. Nastro Donato delivers a hit. The puck goes to Kawaguchi, who squibs it in. Both teams will change it up as Januzzi behind his net will drop it for Mayhew. Kyle Mayhew skates along the near side, gets around Kawaguchi, he'll push it across. Pass picked off by Idaho as Will Merchant throws it behind the net. Vice lets it go for Murphy as near side Mayhew takes it. He'll push it to his right for Aragon who crosses center ice and he'll swing it around the boards. Wesley lets it go as Wade Murphy gathers it. He'll push it across Idaho now to the far side, skating from left to right. They'll get it out to center ice for Marchand and get sandwiched by Aragon and Wesley at the center red line. Marchand gets it and throws it towards Januzzi, who one hands it towards Wesley. Now to Bocage down the middle. He'll feed it to his left for Aragon. Aragon tried to center it to Penner, and it's taken away as Idaho lifts it out into the Grizzly zone. Murphy chasing after it, gets to the far circle. Millimac looking for a pass, and it's picked off by Teixeira. Now Aragon over to Penner across the center ice, and he'll skip it towards Kylie as both teams will change it up. We're, we've got about eight minutes left in the first period. Utah leads two to one. Teixeira blue line to blue line pass, goes tape to tape to Bocage. He'll whip it around the boards. Berg gets it along the near wall, and Ido comes away with the puck. Still heads cross center ice, Millimock. You know, look for a shot at the Utah blue line. It's blocked away by Tex Shara. Tex holds his face severe. We're hit with a high stick. Far circle shot is blocked away by Januzzi. It was taken by Willie Neerham. Adam Berg near side gets a new try. Try to get to his right, and Miller got a stick in the way. Still heads near the Grizzlies bench. We'll sky it in. Neerham chasing after it. And Dennison will bank it off the end boards. Dennison got blasted by Neerham. Wickers ahead to Stapley. Left wing, he crosses center ice and throws it in. Kylie behind his net. We'll feed it to the far side. It bounced off a of Bocage's skate. It's Manning trying to get to Stapley. I know. 
Deflects it back towards the right point. Stapley fires towards the net. And it bounced off of Manning onto Kylie, who gathers it along the far goal line and holds on with 7.06 left in the first. It's Grizzlies two and the Stillheads one. A lot of action the first five and a half minutes in. Stapley scored 3.32 in with Cutler and Manning getting the assist. And then a minute and 13 seconds later, Tyler Penner connected on a rebound from a Dylan Fitz shot. Penner gets his 10th of the year. And then less than a minute after that, 5.27 in, our Curry scored on a breakaway for his 21st of the year. Grizzlies win the draw. Salem down the middle shot is blocked by Kumatsis, the Arizona State product. As now Salem tries to center out in front. It's blocked by Kumatsis, and it flies out of play off the protective netting. Kumatsis will limp towards the bench. As he blocked the Salem shot, then he intercepted the centering pass and deflected off of him and out of play. As Kumatsis will walk towards the locker room, as he's going to be looked at by the trainer. As Kumatsis got a stick in the way, but diving for the centering pass, and that's why the whistle blew. About 10 seconds before that, blocked a shot from Luke Salem. Salem's looked pretty impressive in his pro debut. As we're 13 minutes in, and he's already contributed quite a bit to the Grizzlies' attack. Stapley will take the draw. The University of Denver product, second-year pro. He'll take the draw for Utah near circle. It's won by Idaho. It squibs towards Wickers. He gets it to Stapley in the near corner. He'll skate along the goal line. Shot saved by Kylie. Rebound goes to Idaho. As Mastro Donato crosses center ice three on three. He'll throw it into the far corner as the puck skips awkwardly. Salem collides with our Curry as still Ed's trying to escape the corner. As Manning over there, our Curry will bounce it off the Manning who gets the puck as it's spinning on its side. As Stapley will tamp it off the near glass, chasing after it. As Jade Miller closing the gap as Cutler. Cutler holds on to Miller, and it's going to be a penalty on Cutler. Two minutes for holding. Play still alive. Harsh will throw it towards the Utah line. It's gathered by Wesley. And holding's going to be the call on Brandon Cutler as he just grabbed Jade Miller from behind. 6.15's left in the first period. And the Stillheads get their second power play of the first period. We mentioned Idaho. They've got the number one power play unit in the league at 28.9%. They are 8 for 24. If you count that unsuccessful power play early in the contest, they are 8 for 24 on the power play against the Grizzlies this season. Ty Pelton Bice will take the draw for Idaho against Utah's Cole Gallant. Watch out for Bice. He has 16 goals and 39 assists this season. If I remember right, Bice actually got the assist on the R. Curry goal. Idaho wins the draw down the middle. Cup a high slot. Gets to the far side. Bice throws to the far goal line. Now down the middle towards Merchant. He gets surrounded by three Grizzlies. He couldn't handle it. Mayhew danced around and skates around Utah's net towards the near side. As Mayhew pushes across and it bounced off a stillhead. Our crate enters and feeds to the right for Murphy. Wade Murphy gets to Merchant right side. He'll feather it up top to Kadla. Back to the right side for our Curry. Couldn't handle it. Now he gathers it before Mayhew could. Our Curry skates towards his left, lays it for Kadla, who's dancing in the high slot. He'll feed it to the far side for Bice. He'll take a lefty shot. Save rebound. Shot the score as Will Merchant's tied it up on a power play goal with 536 left in the first period. Merchant gets his eighth of the year. As he still had scored 39 seconds into the power play, and they tied it up at two. Puck ended up with Murphy. Murphy was about five feet in front of the crease, took a shot off of Januzzi's pads, almost looking for a rebound. He's either going to score five or he was going to get a rebound. Merchant got the rebound out in front and sell the pass the goal line. So two unanswered for Idaho after the Grizzlies got the first two of the night with Brett Stapley and Tyler Penner finding the back of the net. Our Curry and Merchant have Idaho's goals. Grizzlies win the draw. Five and a half minutes left in the first period. As Aragon will fly it into the far corner, deep in the stillhead zone. Grizzlies skating from right to left. As Fitz trying to get towards Aragon to bounce off a Zen skate. Idaho has an on-man break. Three on two. Now it's three on three as Penner joins the play. Far circle. Lefty shot. It's the post. Iron unkind as A.J. White looking to give Idaho a 3-2 lead. It's still tied as Zen's at new tries. Moves it towards the center line. Masha Donato throws it across. Puck ends up near the Idaho line. Fitz will throw it in as Idaho let, let him play it on a delayed offside. Puck glides towards the near side. Masha Donato gets the new tries. 
He'll squib it across. Idaho settles over the line as they skate towards the far corner. Idaho centers it, bounced off a wicker stick. As Nashville Donato will hit it off of Berg. Berg handles the puck two on one. He races down the ice. He'll get it to Fitz. Near circle, take a righty shot. Saved by Kylie. Fitz with a second shot that bounces off of Kylie. As the second look went about that waist high. Fitz on the right side, dance around. Now he skates towards the near corner, looks to center. It bounced off a of Master Donato stick. He'll push it ahead. Ido across the center ice. Milomak stops along the right point. He'll dump it to the corner. As it's taken by Ido back towards Milomak, he'll skate in. He'll take a lefty shot. And he missed the net. Now far side shot is blocked by Wickers. Boy, Milomak made the move on Januzzi, but just missed the net as we're still tied at two. Nick Kanadi at the Idaho line. Near side, he'll get it across to Jake Murray, back towards Kanadi, who will force it off the far boards. Puck at center ice, Salem will toss it off the far wall, and the puck deflects out of play. Near backup goaltender Brian Thompson. Chris Bestel, the beast, the equipment manager, gives a fan a souvenir right behind the Stillheads bench. 3.55 left in the first period. It's the Grizzlies 2 and the Stillheads 2. We're back in one minute on the Grizzlies Hockey Network. This isn't just copper. It's our job. It's food on our family's tables. Without it, we couldn't stay in touch. It's what keeps our homes warm and our lights on. It's the power behind the team and a greener, brighter future. This isn't just copper. It's a proud Utah and a strong America. From commercial to recreational truck accessories, Mountain Land Truck Outfitters has got what you need. Flatbeds, spray and bed liners, lifts and leveling kits, wheels and tires. Mountain Land Truck Outfitters proudly uses a brand you know and trust. And with our experienced, knowledgeable, and friendly staff, your visit here will be informative and enjoyable. Stop into our convenient location in Provo at 265 South 100 West. Or call 801-225-4637 to get a quote for your fleet or individual truck. Mountain Land Truck Outfitters. 3.55 left in the first period. It's Utah 2, Idaho 2. Brett Stapley and Tyler Penner of the Grizzlies goals. Francisco Arcuri and Will Merchant have scored for Idaho. Merchant's power play goal was scored 14-24 in with the assist going to Wade Murphy and Patrick Kudla. Grizzlies dumping in. Stapley far corner. He'll get to Manning, who gets pushed along the glass by Kanadi. Manning breaks free, feeds it back towards Stapley. Far side, he'll whip it around the boards. Cut off by Manning in the far side. Manning switches places with Stapley. As he'll drop it for Cutler, who lets it go to Stapley, far corner. Stapley gets pushed in the back by Murray. He'll get it up top to Wesley. He throws it back to the far corner as it glanced off of Manning's stick. Manning, a guy who works hard each and every shift. As Cutler, back behind his net, back behind Idaho's net. Bice pitches it to the near side as Manning continues to battle with Bice. Cutler trying to get to Stapley, who has a tap off his stick. Near side, Idaho tattoos it off the near glass, and the puck will hit the up out to center ice. Mayhew over to Wesley. He gets it back to Mayhew. Catches the hot pass. He skates down the middle. He steps over the line and feeds it to the far corner. He gets the skipping puck. Rolls along the boards. Blake Wells in his professional debut chasing after it. Idaho gathers it as Murphy with a hot pass ahead to White who couldn't handle it. As Mayhew will tap it off an Idaho stick. The puck goes flying out of play. And the fan makes a nice catch in row two of section 114. As the fans applaud the nice catch by the fan right there. Just in front of Press Row. 2.46 left in the first. Both teams have 10 shots and both have two goals. So it's been a very entertaining and fun first period. Remember, it's the same two teams tomorrow night for the series finale. As Utah wins the draw, Dennison near side crosses center ice and he'll sky it in as it goes to the far corner. Cutler gathers it, he'll push it ahead, or Curry couldn't handle it at the Idaho line. Blake Wells in his pro debut near side. He'll fire it in as it goes wide off the Maverick sign along the end boards. As uh, still heads, get to our Curry. He's got an NHL entry-level deal with that with Dallas. He'll get to Kawaguchi, who drops it back for our Curry. He's got 21 goals this season. He pivots in the right point, gets to Kudla. He moves to his left as he still heads dance around. And that's Reese Hirsch. He will feed it over to the far corner. As the still heads get it behind the net, our Curry dance around. He'll bounce it off of Dennison, the Merrimack product. As Idaho gathers it, as they center it, picked off by Blake Wells. He'll feed it to Bokaj left side. Bokaj taps off the boards. He tries to get around Kubla. Bokaj does. Near corner, he gets bounced off the boards by Harsh. As Manning 
Make that Bocage continues to battle with Cudlup. Puck ends up back with another still out. fanned on clearing it out. Wicker's left point will dance into the near corner. Penner will drop it for Bocage. He's in the near goal line. He'll get it up top for Salem. Luke Salem will take a lefty shot that goes just wide as he fired a stick side past Kylie, but just missed the net. Aragon far side. He'll skate towards the far circle, take a lefty shot that's redirected by an Idaho stick. Salem gets up top to Wickers, who skates towards the left point to keep it in. He'll fire it in deep. Puck skips towards the far corner as Aragon and Cudla battle. White joins the play. As coming out of the scrum is A.J. White. He'll throw it around Idaho's net at a play. Grizzlies want delay of game. The officials are going to talk it over. Is it going to be delay of game? Referee Hunter Modinger talking with the two linesmen, Tyler Keston and Craig Peterson. 107 left in the first period. And it's A.J. White. Might get two minutes for delay of game. That's what the Grizzlies are arguing. They're still talking it over in the near circle of the stillhead zone. As looks like, unless it bounced off the glass, it should be delay of game on A.J. White. As he was in his own zone and fired it out. Oh, he said it got tipped. So no delay of game. It got tipped off the glass, according to the referee. So no delay of game on the play. As we continue to skeet five on five, draw is going to be in the stillhead zone. Josh Weshley, the Grizzlies captain, argues this case with Hunter Mottinger, the referee. Draw is going to be in the nearest circle. Tyler Penner joined the double-digit goal-scoring club as he picked up his 10th of the season. He gave Utah a 2-0 lead, 445 in. Idaho has since responded with two unanswered. The tie to two, Grizzlies won the draw. Right side, Wesley shot is blocked away by Kylie. Still has to come back the other way. Sends over to Masher Donato, trying to get it back to Zenz. Puck ends up skipping towards Januzzi. He fires it off the near boards. Masher Donato gets hit with a high stick. His helmet comes off, and it looks like Dylan Fitz is going to go to the Rogers and Russell Legal Solutions holding cell. As Masher Donato was hit with a high stick, is it going to be two minutes or four? As Masher Donato looking for his helmet, Dylan Fitz will serve a penalty. It's going to be a two-minute penalty. According to referee Hunter Modinger, as Fitz will go to the box, 51.5 seconds are left in the first as Keone Teixeira has a conversation with Modinger. We're tied to two. Idaho is one for two on the power play here tonight. So draws him in the near side. Fitz hit Martin, it hit uh, Asher Donato with a high stick. 19.08 into the first period. It's time of penalty. As a draw won by the Grizzlies, they skate towards the near side. Idaho runs it down. As dancing around is Will Merchant. He'll drop it for Bice, who feeds it to our Curry right side. He danced in the point, skates towards the circle. Now he feathers it up top to Kudla. Back towards our Curry, back to Kudla. He moves to his left, back to Kudla. One-timer saved by Januzzi. Rebound goes towards the far corner. Texture over there battles with Bice. As players from both teams are trying to jab it away. Bice over there. Puck ends up with Idaho in the left point. As Kudla down the middle feeds Diz right for a curry. Swings and misses. He'll skate towards the near corner. Messner pushes our curry. Our curry and Messner hold each other. Action still in the corner. Ten seconds left in the period. They get it up top to Kudla. Bounce off is sticking out to center ice. Four seconds left in the frame. Kudla will fling it into the now vacated near corner. And time runs out in the first period. As Quinn Wickers fires the puck into Will Merchant at the buzzer. We're tied at two and what turned out to be a very entertaining first period. Utah got first period goals from Brett Stapley and Tyler Penner. Idaho got goals from Francisco R. Curry and Will Merchant. It's a Grizzlies two and the Stillheads two. Remember, Idaho's going to be on the power play for the first minute and nine seconds of the second period. We'll come back and recap the first frame and also do some scoreboard watching on some other action in the Mountain Division. Once again, the score after 20 minutes, it's Utah Grizzlies 2 and the Idaho Stillheads 2. At Black Bear Diner, you always get more. More choice, more amazing food, more value. So get more and get it today. Black Bear Diamond. 
Since 1939, America First has helped people start businesses, buy homes and cars, and achieve their financial goals. Today, our top priority is still the financial success of you and your family, which is why we're giving new members $100 when they sign up for a basic savings and checking account and another $100 when they upgrade to premium checking and enroll in and use direct deposit. So head to AmericaFirst.com today and join the credit union that always puts its members first. Why is Jerry Signer the number one Kia store in the Salt Lake region? Selection. We've got over 350 new Kias to choose from. Savings. Shop over 40 new Kia Sportage models and save up to $2,500 off when you buy. Jerry Signer has been the area's most trusted automotive source for over 40 years. Little wonder then how we've made thousands of friends to last a lifetime. Jerry Signer Kia, South Jordan. prices. And when you download the Smiths app, you can enjoy over $500 in savings every week with digital coupons and earn fuel points to save up to a dollar per gallon at the pump. With a Boost membership, you'll save even more with double fuel points and free delivery. Discover more ways to save big every day. Smiths, fresh for everyone. Welcome back to Utah Grizzlies Hockey. First intermission, we're tied at two. Both teams had 11 shots in the first frame, and obviously with the two goals, you can say it was a pretty evenly played period. Of the 11 shots, Utah had seven scoring chances, and Idaho had five. Grizzlies won the faceoff battle 10-8 to eight in the first period. Utah delivered 11 hits to Idaho's five, according to the off-ice officials. Grizzlies had three giveaways, and Idaho had four. Utah got on the board first as Brett Stapley scored on what looked to be a pretty innocent-looking shot from the near circle. It just bounced off of Kylie and into the back of the net as Stapley went stick side on the Idaho netminder. He scored his 23rd of the year. Luke Manning and Brandon Cutler picked up the assist. A minute and 11 seconds later, the Grizzlies got back on the board as Kylie in the first five minutes of play certainly allowed quite a few rebounds. The initial shot was taken from Dylan Fitz in the near circle. And Penner and Aragon were both in the same area, and Penner got the puck and put it away for his 10th of the year. Fitz and Aragon got the assist, and with that, Utah took a 2 nothing lead. And for Tyler Penner, he joins the double-digit goal-scoring club. He is making his 210th career consecutive appearance for the Grizzlies. And he picked up his 34th goal in a Utah uniform, 455 into the first. Idaho got on the board less than a minute later. Francisco R. Curry got a breakaway, just skated down the middle. Faked to his right, went back to his left, and fired a pass Januzzi for his 21st of the year. Ty Pelton Vice got the assist, which is his 40th of the season. Now on Wednesday night, Grizzlies had two power plays, and Idaho didn't have a single one. Idaho had three power plays in the first period. Luke Salem got an elbowing minor, 6.03 in. Um, Ido did not score there. Brandon Cutler got a holding minor, 13.45 in. And Ido scored on that power play as Will Marchant got his eighth of the year. The initial shot was taken uh, from the high slot. It was either Cudlip or Ty Pelton Bice. And the shot was bounced off of Januzzi. And the puck ended up going towards Murphy. It fired towards Januzzi's pads. It ricocheted off his pads onto Merchant. He put it away and scored 14-24 in. Idaho had four power play shots in the first period. So after one, we're tied at two. Dante Januzzi and Jake Kiley, the two goaltenders, each stopped 9 of 11. For the Grizzlies, Dylan Fitz led the way with four shots. The Ironman Tyler Penner had two and then one shot each for Stapley, who obviously scored on his one shot, as well as Manning, Messner, Wesley, and Cole Gallant. For Idaho in their 11 shots, Will Merchant had three. Wade Murphy and Willie Naram had two shots, and then four other still heads had one shot in the first period. 
If you're a Grizzlies fan, obviously you're doing quite a bit of scoreboard watching as Allen is at Rapid City and Wichita is at Tulsa. Iowa is at Kansas City tonight. And when we come back to the Rio Tinto Kennecott intermission report, we will go over all the scores in the league, including the three involving Mountain Division teams. After one period, it's the Grizzlies two and the Steelheads two. We're back in two minutes on the Grizzlies Hockey Network. Thanks to Les Schwab Tires, I'm a constant backseat driver, but mom's a little stressed about spending. Remember, breathe in. Now watch your speed and breathe out. Good. Even though we're watching our wallets, Les Schwab is still watching out for our safety. So it's right here. Help keep drivers and backseat drivers safe with Les Schwab Tires. Why is Jerry Signer the number one Kia store in the Salt Lake region? Selection. We've got over 350 new Kias to choose from. Savings. Shop over 40 new Kia Sportage models and save up to $2,500 off when you buy. Jerry Signer has been the area's most trusted automotive source for over 40 years. What a wonder then how we've made thousands of friends to last a lifetime. Jerry Center, Kia, Salt Lake. At Black Bear Diner, you always get more. More choice, more amazing food, more value. From huge breakfasts to delicious lunches and hearty dinners, Black Bear Diner has more for you. So get more when you want it, the way you want it, and get it today. Good old-fashioned family food, Black Bear Diner. Black Bear Diner. Welcome back to Tucson Grizzlies Hockey First Intermission. We're tied at two in what really was one of the more entertaining periods of hockey we've seen here at Maverick Center all season. Well, we're doing some scoreboard watching tonight. Tulsa is in third place in the Mountain Division with 63 standings points. They host Wichita tonight over at BOK Center. And after two periods, Tulsa leads Wichita 2-1. to one. As Oilers got goals from Kyle Krenkovic and Dante Sheriff, Jason Penio scored for Wichita. Oilers have doubled up Wichita in shots 23-12. to 12. Nobody has a power play so far, and the Oilers have... A 2-1 lead, Julian Junka stopped 11 of 12, and Trevor Gorsuch is in there for Wichita, and he has saved 21 of 23. Kansas City trails 1-0 against Iowa. That game played in Kansas City. There's an outside chance that with a Mavericks victory, they will clinch the Mountain Division Championship. Hughes has Iowa's goal. He scored 10-56 into the second period. Right now, there's eight minutes and 40 seconds left in the second over at Cable Dama Arena, and Iowa leads Kansas City one to nothing. Remember, Kansas City will be at, in Maverick Center. They'll be in town next week for a big three-game set the next Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. That's the final three home games of the regular season, April 3rd, 5th, and 6th. Get your tickets to utahgrizzlies.com. Well, it'll be interesting to see Kansas City, who's just been unbelievable on the road. Get this, at Kansas City, uh, on the road, their record is 26-3-2-1. and one. They've lost just six games on the road and only three past regulation. The Allen Americans are on the road taking on the Rapid City Rush over at the Monument. Rapid City came away with the victory on Wednesday night. And through one period, Rapid City... Leads 3-1. to one. That's right. The Rush have first period goals. Two of them by Blake Bennett. Will Rydell has also found the back of the net. Grant Ebert has Allen's lone tally. A lot of shots taken in the first. Allen had 17. Rapid City with 16. And after one period, Rapid City leads 3-1. to one. The Rush, with a victory tonight in regulation, ties Allen for fifth place in the Mountain Division with 57 standings points. Um, Allen and Rapid City play once again tomorrow over at the Monument. And then next week, Rapid City will be at Idaho. So it's going to be a tough one for Rapid City next week, taking on the Stillheads on the road. Other action across the league. Second intermission, Indy and Fort Wayne are tied at two. Late third period, Savannah has a 5-0 lead over Orlando. Late third, Jacksonville leads Florida 4-3. Games have gone final in the league. 
Toledo defeats Wheeling 3-2. It was also a 3-2 final Worcester over Newfoundland. Jeff Carr's Norfolk Admirals defeat Atlanta 5-2. In overtime, South Carolina defeats first place Greenville. That's first place in the South Division, Greenville, 3-2. Late third period, Juan Revere leads Maine 6-3. Kalamazoo defeats Cincinnati 4-1, and Adirondack gets a 5-2 victory over Reading. Adirondack is four points ahead of Norfolk for first place in the North Division. Here at Maverick Center, Utah got first period goals from Brett Stapley and Tyler Penner. And what can you say about Brett Stapley? He's been certainly one of the best players in the league. They have a first-team All-League and a second-team All-League, and i got to imagine... Brett Stapley, especially with the way he's played since Christmas, is a strong candidate to be on either the first or second team. Stapley has 12 points in his last eight games, with this being the eighth contest. He came into play time for seventh in the league with 67 points, and he is seventh in the league with 45 assists. One of the players that's ahead of Stapley in the assist column is Idaho's Matt Register, was missing a game for the first time this season. Register has nine goals and 48 assists in 65 games this year. For the Grizzlies, it's been their bread and butter of Stapley and Cutler. Cutler is one of three players who have appeared in every game for the Grizzlies this season. And that includes Tyler Penner and the Merrimack product, Mick Messner, who's certainly happy to have one of his former Merrimack teammates, Liam Dennison, on the Grizzlies club. Dennison He's outstanding in the first period for the Grizzlies. And I got to say, you know, if you joined us late, the Grizzlies did sign a couple new players. Luke Salem yesterday, a talented defenseman who's wearing number five. And forward Blake Wells was signed earlier today. Those guys both look pretty impressive. Wells brings size to the table. And Salem looks like he's going to be a pretty good playmaker. But once he gets his feet wet, it looks like he's going to be a good one. And I think Blake Wells is going to be a keeper as well. So Grizzlies getting some help from the college ranks. Salem played his college hockey at St. Lawrence University. In four years, he had 18 goals and 37 assists. His best statistical season came last year where he had 10 goals and 17 assists as well as a team-leading plus 12 rating. He was the captain at St. Lawrence this season where he had three goals and five assists in 38 games. As for Blake Wells, this year he played at American International College uh, last year, um, he, you know, he played his first four seasons in college at UMass Lowell, and then was a graduate transfer to AIC this season where he had four goals and six assists in 32 games. So it was fun to see Blake Wells and Luke Salem out there for the first time as professionals. It looks like they were pretty impressive in the first 20 minutes of play. Well, in the second period, I think it's obvious that, you know, Idaho outplayed Utah on Wednesday night. You know, the Stillheads over the course of a season are a plus three in the goal margin in the first period. But in the second frame, Idaho has scored 114 goals and they've allowed just 69. So the Stillheads are a plus 45 in the goal differential in the second period this season. As we mentioned many times here over the last couple of months, the Grizzlies have been a strong third period club. Over the last 29 games, and I certainly, I know that's kind of a weird number, but over the last 29 games, the Grizzlies were a plus 16 in the goal differential, 44 to 28 over the last 29 games. Utah has been a strong third period club, and particularly they've been pretty good here at Maverick Center. Uh, obviously, remember some of the big comebacks uh, in the third period over the last few weeks. Um, we'll see if the Grizzlies play well in the second and keep it a game heading into the third. And if they do, I think the Grizzlies have a pretty good chance to get some standings points here tonight. It's the 11th meeting overall this season between the Grizzlies and Stillheads. There will be four more meetings between the clubs. Remember tomorrow night to get your tickets for a 7-10 faceoff between the Grizzlies and Stillheads. Next week, the Grizzlies face first place Kansas City for a three-game set next Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. Don't forget Saturday, April 6th, will be Fan Appreciation Night presented by Les Schwab. Then the Grizzlies will be on the road for two straight to end the regular season at Idaho's Central Arena as they take on the Stillheads. Four of the final seven games in the regular season will be against Idaho, and obviously it's tough with Kansas City being in first place, but the Grizzlies, as, as what really has been the case in past years, you know, late in the season, you know, when they've needed the most, Grizzlies have come through. 
We'll see the Grizzlies certainly need some victories. They're getting some help as Allen trails 3-1 to one to Rapid City tonight. And Tulsa's got a one-goal lead. You know, Tulsa right now is two points ahead of Utah for third place in the Mountain Division. This has been the Rio Tinto Kennecott Intermission Report as Utah and Idaho are tied at two. Remember, Idaho is going to be on the power play for the first minute and nine seconds of the second. We'll come back and have second period action on the other side. Once again, it's Utah 2 and Idaho 2. We'll be back in a minute 30 on the Grizzlies Hockey Network. From commercial to recreational truck accessories, Mountain Land Truck Outfitters has got what you need. Flatbeds, spray and bed liners, lifts and leveling kits, wheels and tires. Mountain Land Truck Outfitters proudly uses a brand you know and trust. And with our experienced, knowledgeable, and friendly staff, your visit here will be informative and enjoyable. Stop into our convenient location in Provo at 265 South 100 West or call 801-225-4637 to get a quote for your fleet or individual truck mountain this isn't just copper it's our job it's food on our family's tables without it we couldn't stay in touch it's what keeps our homes warm and our lights on it's the power behind the team and a greener brighter future this isn't just copper it's a proud utah and a strong america why is Jerry Seiner the number one Kia store in the Salt Lake region? Selection. We've got over 350 new Kias to choose from. Savings. Shop over 30 new Kia Seltos models and save up to 2,000 off when you buy. Jerry Seiner has been the area's most trusted automotive source for over 40 years. Little wonder then how we've made thousands of friends to last a lifetime. Jerry Seiner Kia Salt Lake. Welcome back to Utah Grizzlies Hockey. I'm Tyson Whiting. Second period of action will begin here shortly as we got a pretty good Friday night crowd. Don't forget to get your tickets for tomorrow night's action as Grizzlies and Steelheads will meet for the 12th time this season. And after tonight, Grizzlies will have four home games left. Obviously, it'll be Saturday night against Idaho. And the next week, uh, the Kansas City Mavericks will be in town for the only series of the season, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday at 7 o'clock. Remember, Next Saturday, eight days from now, is going to be Fan Appreciation Night presented by Les Schwab. Grizzlies will start the second period on the penalty kill for the next minute and nine seconds. Mick Messner is out there with Cole Gallant as well as Mayhew and Wesley. Messner will take the draw for Idaho. It's Ty Pelton Bice taking the draw. He's out there with Will Merchant and Wade Murphy as well as Patrick Cudla and Francisco Arcuri. So four forwards for the Stillheads on the ice. They win the draw. Grizzlies skate from left to right as we see it from high top section 114 in the second period. Left wing pass connects to R. Curry. Steps over the line, drops it for Pelton Bice. Who centers that's taken away by Gallant. Gallant one on three, gets a shoulder check from Murphy and gets divorced in the puck. Murphy right side, squibs it across. It's taken away by Messner. Messner skates up ice, one on two, he crosses center. Now he veers off to the left, gets around Merchant. Lefty shot, saved by Kylie. Rebound goes towards Idaho. Neutral ice, Murphy couldn't handle it. Gallant feeds it back to Mayhew. Who directs over to Wesley, who slices it towards Aragon, who has a tap off his stick. Aragon's stick breaks in two. He gets a new one from Jackson Hibbert, the equipment manager. Down the middle, Merchant takes a lefty shot and didn't get much on it. Ido feeds it to the far side. Now back to Bice near goal line. And so back into Dar Curry near circle. He feeds it back to the near goal line for Murphy, who fires towards the net and miss, misfired it. Aragon gathers it in the slot and he'll clear it out. Ten seconds left in the Idaho power play. Fitz stands up in the box as Jake Murray, who spent 19 games in the AHL with Texas, moves to his right. Kanadi around Utah's net as Fitz is out of the box. He joins the play. Kanadi rolls it back behind Utah's net. It kicks to A.J. White in the near corner. As Salem holds up Kawaguchi. Salem, 175 pounds. Looks like he's pretty strong. Stapley over there. Wickers throws a stillhead into the glass. Stapley feeds it back towards Fitz out of the pile. Fitz near side, moves it across. It taps off a white stick. As Idaho back at their line, Kanadi left wings it ahead to Masha Donato, who steps over the line. He drops off the near boards. Fitz delivers a shoulder check. He gathers the puck, and he'll lift it into the stillhead zone. No icing as Jake Murray gathers it. Murray is 6'3", defense moves a great skater. 
He'll push it to his left for Kanadi, who crosses center. Now he steps over the blue. Kanadi pivots and stops in the left point. He'll throw it to the right circle all alone. Righty shot saved by Januzzi, who sticks it back towards the near circle for Manning. Now state play across to Cutler, who gets the center ice. And he'll loft it in as the puck wobbles on its side. Kanadi over there with Manning, who kind of curls it around the net. Nasha Donato, far corner over to Murray, who pushed ahead, but it didn't get very far. Bocage to State Blue, gets back checked by Masha Donato. Taken away is Kanadi, who lifts it to the left side. Masha Donato chases after, he gathers it near a circle. Shot saved by Januzzi in the butterfly position. Cutler gets it left point, and so push it across. Bocage gets it stick in the way as it goes to center ice. Idaho still in control as Reese Harsh trying to saucer it ahead. It's taken away by Bocage over to Berg. What timer goes wide from the high slot? Gallant. Near goal line, over skates as he goes down. Kudla advances towards Niram, who one hands it deep into the Grizzly zone, and it's going to be icing on Idaho as we get a whistle with 17 14 left in the second. Both teams had 11 shots in the first period. Still heads have outshot the Grizzlies 2 to 1 here so far in the second. And there's a lot of sports and entertainment options out there. We appreciate you choosing the Grizzlies here tonight. Blake Wells and Luke Salem are in their professional debuts. Wells is on the ice right now, wearing number 54. As he is out there with Messner and Bokaj. Messner takes the draw. It's won by Utah. Cutler, instead of Bokaj, throws it towards the corner. As Messner gets dragged down by Jade Miller. Cutler skates over there. He pushes, gets pushed by Cudla. As Messner gets tripped up, Jade Miller touches up the puck. And it's going to be a Utah power play. Holding is going to be the call as Mick Messner's hustle in the corner draws a penalty. Idaho's Jade Miller doesn't agree with the call, but the Grizzlies will be on the power play for the first time tonight. Utah this season is an even 19% on the power play. Idaho's penalty kill is 79.4%. Utah against Idaho this year is 25% on the power play, 7 for 28. As Jade Miller gets two minutes for holding, 2.59 into the second period. Draw one by Idaho. Patrick Cudla lifts it ahead. Left point. Mayhew gets the skipping puck. He'll get it to steeply back to Mayhew. The University of Denver connection. Mayhew now in the high slot. He'll move it to his left. As Blunt over to steeply at the far goal line. Steeply surveys. He'll get it up top to Bokaj, but it goes past him and out of the zone. All the way towards Januzzi as Grizzlies will spread the ice. Januzzi pitches to the far side for Bokaj. He drops it for Mayhew behind the net. Both as Mayhew gets around to center ice, he'll bounce it off the still head and Kumatsi. So he gathers the puck. He collides with Bokaj. Puck ends up towards the far wing boards. Run down by Bokaj. Kumatsi comes off the ice. Bokaj is steeply near side. He crosses the center red. He'll drop it for Cutler across to the center red. Now he veers off to the left. Cutler far corner. He skates around Idaho's net. He'll tap it off the near boards. It's gathered by Idaho's Willie Niram, who pushes out to center ice and chases after it. Mayhew gets there before Niram, as it still heads at the end of a shift. Halfway through Utah's first power play of the game, Cutler right wing crosses center ice and steps over the blue line. Sauces across to Bocage. He throws it back to the right point. Mayhew gets it off the boards. He'll wrap it around the wall. As Kanadi far side will lift it all the way into the Grizzly zone as the puck will glide towards the near corner. Merchant gets there before Mayhew. Mayhew took it away from him and feeds it to the far corner, chases after it. He'll drop it for Stapley. As Merchant pushes Mayhew, skates off the ice. Uh, Stapley drops for Manning. Center ice, he loses the puck. Idaho gathers it, and they'll skate right to the right side. Grizzlies back defensively. Far side, righty shot, saved by Januzzi. And after the whistle, Stapley got pushed along the Utah net by Wade Murphy. Murphy took the shot, was behind the net, and he threw Stapley behind Utah's net, and Stapley slow to get up. Murphy's going to get a penalty as Colin Lee, the Grizzlies trainer, runs out to make sure Stapley's okay. As Stapley back to his feet as he looks at his right wrist as his wrist just crashed into the netting behind Utah's net that they're defending in the second period. As Murphy took the shot and in frustration after he saw Januzzi make the save, just threw Stapley into the net. So it looks like roughing's going to be the call. And I imagine it might be two minutes. There's still 25 seconds left in the... Well, let's see. Now it's going to be a... Yeah, Murphy just kind of nudged Stapley. It was at an awkward angle behind Utah's net. So Grizzlies are going to get a five-on-three power play for 25 seconds. As Murphy gets two minutes for roughing. 
As Miller's already in the box, still serving his holding minor, which came 259 into the second. So five on three for 25 seconds. Draws give me the far circle, and it's won by Idaho, and they'll clear it out. It's cleared out by Jake Miller. Grizzly skating from left to right. Bokaj gets the new tries. He'll drop it for Cutler. Back to Bokaj, who enters from the right side. He stops at the point. Gets up top to Mayhew. He's got a 15 power play assist. Over to Bokaj near a circle. Back to Cutler over to Bokaj. He'll fight, feed it to Mayhew. Left side. Mayhew with the lefty shot. Kick saved by Kylie. Out of the box is Jade Miller. It's a five on four power play for the Grizzlies. Cutler near side. Gets to Bokaj. Who directs it to Mayhew. Who filters it off the far boards. Fits behind the net. Will kick it over to the near side. Cutler gets hit by White. Bokaj over there. Fitz comes out of the pile with a puck. He hits the side of the net. As puck goes over to Millet Murray, who drags along the near wing boards. Cutler keeps it in right point. He'll get to Mayhew. High slot. Lefty shot goes wide. He went stick side on Kylie, but missed the net. Utah gets up top, top to Bokaj, but it goes past him as the puck ended up waist high. Grizzlies make a line change. So do the Steelheads. As we got 55 seconds left in the five on four power play. We're tied at two. 14-17 and counting left in the second. Nick Messner splits the double team right side. Skates in. He'll take a lefty shot. And a score! Big Messner gets his 15th of the year. And the Grizzlies have taken a 3-2 lead. Idaho's arguing. They don't think the goal should count. They think Messner ran into Kylie. As the Grizzlies get a power play goal. It's their eighth against Idaho this season. Big Messner just skated down the right wing. Split a double team. And once he split the double team, it was him and Kylie. As Messner skated in, made some contact with Kylie, but Messner got pushed into him by, I believe, Roman Radzinski. Make that Nick Kanadi. And Kanadi kind of nudged Messner. They're talking it over, the referee and two linesmen. It looked like the Idaho player nudged into, uh, pushed um, Messner into Kylie. And the call on the ice is a good goal, but it's under further review. I believe, based on what we saw, it should be a good goal. Christian Horn and Ryan Knast, which Grizzlies brain trust talks it over. They did show a replay. Never Sheen and Keenan Kelly, the Idaho coaches, look towards the scores table. Right now it's 3-2 Grizzlies. McMessner should get his 15th of the year. Now, Messner did run into Kylie, but it looked like he got pushed into him by Kanadi. And so they're looking it over right now. There was 45 seconds left in the power play when the Grizzlies tallied their third goal. 14-11 left in the second. It's Utah 3 and Idaho 2 as the call on the ice was a good goal. Hunter Modinger, the referee, and Craig Peterson, one of the two linesmen, looking over on the tablet. They are looking at the finer details. It really was an outstanding play by Mick Messner. He utilized his speed, got into the zone, split a double team, and then once he got past everybody, just kind of veered off to the left a little bit to get a good shooting angle on Kylie. And it looked like it wasn't the first attempt they got through, but the second attempt after Kylie um, was ran into by Messner. But as we mentioned, looked like Messner got pushed into him by Nick Kanadi. Good Friday night crowd here at Maverick Center as they're anxiously awaiting the decision from the officials as to whether it's a 3-2 Utah lead or if it's still tied at two. Remember, if the goal doesn't count, then the Grizzlies will stay on the power play for the next 45 seconds. If the goal counts, then it's a power play goal and Utah's up 3-2 and will skate five on five. They're taking a good, long look at this. We've probably gone to about three minutes on this delay. It would be the first goal of the second period. Brett Stapley got Utah on the board, 344 in, and then a minute and 11 seconds later. Let's see. The call on the ice is a good goal. It's 3-2 Utah. <laughs> Messner gets his 15th of the year. Kyle Mayhew gets his 16th power play assist of the season. And overall, his 37th helper. As Hunter Modinger, the referee, talking with Everett Sheen, telling him what he saw. As Messner skated in, Kanadi nudged Messner in the back, and then the puck just kind of trickled past the goal line. Kind of a hesitation before everybody realized. I think the first thing that kind of alerted everybody to the goal being scored was the goal light going off. 
Draw one by Idaho as it's a 3-2 game. We're skating five on five as A.J. White skates down the middle, feeds it to the right side for Murphy. He'll take a righty shot. Saved by Januzzi. He holds on. 14-02 left in the second. Messner with the goal. Mayhew with the assist, 5-49 into the second period. Brown's going to be the near circle. A.J. White will take it against Tyler Penner. Penner's already got a goal tonight. He has 10 goals and 10 assists this season. As he still has one to draw right point. Rodzinski will throw it ahead. White in the far circle. Will feed it across Trevor Zins. Left side, righty shot. Saved by Januzzi. Puck lifts in the air and is banded out to Blake Wells. Wells in his first pro game, 6'2", 200 pounds. Skates along the left side. Steps over the line. Gets poked away by White, but Wells gets it back. Wells throws it to Salem who gets hit in the back. Salem also in his first pro game. Kawaguchi ahead. Bouncing puck. Nasher Donato runs it down. Take a righty shot. Saved by Januzzi. And the puck deflects out of play. Boy, Januzzi a little bit conservative there as the puck was gliding towards him. Nasher Donato got it and had a wide open look. It bounced off of Januzzi and out of play with 13.33 left in the second. Mick Messner gets his 15th of the year as Utah leads 3-2. This is the Grizzlies Hockey Network. Maverick's new Bean to Cup machines always deliver a freshly ground cup of coffee on demand so you can enjoy any of our premium roasts at their best, day or night, hot or ice. Enjoy a fresh cup today. Smith's always gives you more ways to save on top of our lower than low prices. And when you download the Smith's app, you can enjoy over $500 in savings every week with digital coupons and earn fuel points to save up to a dollar per gallon at the pump. With a Boost membership, you'll save even more with double fuel points and free delivery. Discover more ways to save big every day. Smith's. At Black Bear Diner, you always get more. More choice. More amazing food. More value. So get more and get it today. Black Bear Diner. It's a Grizzlies three and the Stillheads two. 13-33 left in the second period. Both teams have a power play goal tonight. As McMessner scored 549 into the second period. That's the difference in the game right now. Draws in the far circle. Grizzlies zone. One by Idaho. Shot is blocked away by Connor Millamock. He took the shot. It was blocked by Utah. Grizzlies get it with Brett Stapley. He will sauce it off the near board. Stapley got hit pretty hard by Niram. As their arm is raised by one of the linesmen, Idaho gathers the puck, and they skate from right to left. Reese Harsh, who had a goal Wednesday, will skate in as Idaho won 6-2 to two that night. Grizzlies trying to even up the series. He'll feed it to Millamack, who gets up top to cuddle up. He throws it to Harsh, left side shot saved by Januzzi, who gathered it about around his collar and moves it across as Manning over towards Stapley, who skates out to new tries, so push it ahead to Cutler, who couldn't handle it. As Stapley gets hit once again by Willie Nerum. Looks like Stapley getting hit hard by Idaho is one of this part of the game plan tonight. Cutler across the center ice, four on three. He'll enter the zone. Millimac over to Miller. Far circle. He dances around, pivots, and throws it off the end boards. Nerum cuts it off. Willie Nerum skates towards the far circle and out to the corner. Nerum gets pushed by Wesley. Idaho gets up top to Kanadi. He feeds it back to the right side. Idaho, our Curry lefty shot is blocked by Gallant as it skips off the glass. Gallant will race towards the Utah blue line and no saucer to head. Kanadi out towards Merchamp. He battles with Bokaj. Action now in the stillhead zone as Gallant gets hit by Kanadi. Bokaj left side skates towards his right. Now he skates down the middle. Take a righty shot. Kick saved by Kylie. Idaho over to Berg. Backhand shot is blocked away by Kylie. As Berg gets pushed in the near corner, Idaho gathers the puck. Murray ahead as our Curry across to Kanadi, who steps over the line right side. They'll skate towards the far corner. Stops. And he'll wrap it around the boards. Wesley cuts it off behind Utah's net. The Grizzlies captain has 17 goals this season. He'll tap it off the glass. Skipping puck towards Bokaj. Now to Mayhew. Who crosses the center ice, and he'll fly it in as it ricochets off the end boards. Murray over in the near corner pivots and gets it towards Kumatsi. Long-range pass connects off a, Mur- Mur- uh, off a Murphy stick. Taking it is Salem. It gets pushed along the end boards by Murphy as he was getting dragged down. He feeds it to the near side. Kumatsi gets double team, taking it away as Fitz, who skates towards center ice, and he'll dump it in. Kumatsi delivering a hit as play's starting to get physical here at Maverick Center. As Zins feeds it to the far side. Now diagonal pass to the left connects to Murphy. Murphy skates towards the near circle, gets around Salem. He'll skate in. Januzzi pokes it away. 
as Murphy's move skated a little bit too close towards Januzzi. Grizzlies getting out to center ice. Aragon right wings it to Penner. Penner over the line. We'll skip it towards the end boards. Aragon knocks down a stillhead. That's going to be a penalty on Aaron Aragon. He touches up the puck. Fans don't like it. As Aragon was chasing after the puck behind Idaho's net, and he pushed down a stillhead. As Roman Rodzinski and Aragon have some words after the whistle. It's going to be an Idaho power play. As Aaron Aragon is going to the Rogers and Russell Legal Solutions holding cell. He's probably saying something to the effect, and how can you see it from all the way down there? As he was skiing behind the net and knocked down a stillhead. Cross-checking is going to be the call. 10.53 left in the second period, so we're about halfway through the scheduled 60 minutes. As Aragon got cut off by Zins, and then Aragon pushed Zins in the back. Zins went down, and Aragon played it, and the penalty was called by referee Hunter Modinger. Two minutes for cross-checking, 9.07 into the second period. It's Idaho's third power play of the game. They're one for three on they're one for three on the night. Draw one by Idaho. Reese Harsh over to Kawaguchi in the left side. Kawaguchi skates towards a circle. Slap shot goes gets goes wide. I think Nira might have gotten a piece of it. Wickers gets double team far corner as Grizzlies will hippity hop it towards the near side, chasing after its tech sheriff. Kawaguchi gathers it in the point. He gets pushed by Tech Sheriff. Kawaguchi over to White, near circle, take a lefty shot that hits the side of the net. Niram feeds it to the near corner where it's taken by Kawaguchi, last year's team MVP. Over to Harsh, who skate sorts his right. Harsh over to Kawaguchi all alone, near circle, lefty shot, kick saved by Januzzi. Rebound, Nasher Donato loses it. Grizzlies pushing out to center ice. Messer chasing after it, as is Gallant. Gallant with a big-time hit on Mastro Donato to get some fans fired up. Mastro Donato picks up his stick. Idaho settles into the zone. Left side, Niram skates towards the near goal line. He stops, feeds it up top. Patrick Cutler gathers it. He'll throw it to the far circle. Wade Murphy will take a righty shot. It's blocked away as Puck ricochets all the way out to center ice. Cutler gathers it. He'll skate back towards his blue line and pitches to his right for Merchamp. He directs it back to Cutler who crosses center ice. He'll force it to his right. Bice drops it as Wade Murphy dances around just outside the far circle. He feeds it up top. Now Cutler gathers a pass and gets it towards Bice. Back to Cutler. Over in the high slot. He'll move it to his left for Murphy. Back to Bice. Over to Murphy. Back to Bice. He'll take a lefty shot that goes wide. Bice has two assists tonight. As Puck in the right point, Merchant over to Kudla. 30 seconds left in the power play. Over to the far circle. Arcree has a glance off his stick towards the end boards. Arcree gathers it from Wickers. Now to Bice over to Murphy. One-timer kick saved by Januzzi. As Grizzlies, Wesley trying to clear it out and it bounced off the referee. Kudla over to the right side. Arcree over to Murphy. Back to Kudla over to Murphy. He feeds it towards the middle. Bounced off of Merchant's skate as he still heads. Get to Murphy, far side, over to Bice, back to Murphy, over to Cudla, right side. Cudla drops it for our curry, he'll take a lefty shot, it's blocked by Penner. Puck kept the ops on to Bice, Grizzlies back at full strength, far corner, goal line. Starting pass out in front, shot, it's blocked by Wesley, and Januzzi covers up. Boy, great passing by the Stillheads. Grizzlies defense really did a good job. Kind of building that wall in front of Januzzi. As I know, did have some good looks. Januzzi made an outstanding save, skating towards his right, and then Murphy bouncing off of Wesley. Januzzi was able to cover up for the recent whistle. 8.46 left in the second. Utah leads Idaho 3-2. to two. Ton of exa- a ton of exciting action from the jump here tonight. Utah leads 3-2. to two. Draw one by Idaho in the attack zone, skating from right to left. Nick Kanati around Utah's net. As he's on the far side, now he pivots, skates towards the corner, being shadowed by Cutler. Kanadi loses the puck, now he battles. As he kicks it towards Kamatsi, he's back towards Kanadi. High slot, lefty shot goes wide as it ricochets off the glass. Dennison along the near boards towards Stapley. Stapley right wing, moves it across towards Wells. Wells in his pro debut over to the far corner. He tried to center it out in front to Stapley. Good idea, but Stapley couldn't gather it. Cutler around the wall, Wells behind the net gets it. And so skate towards the near side, he loses the puck. Jake Murray... Will toss it, but Stapley takes it away. Stapley over to Cutler. One-timer goes wide. As Cutler looking for his 32nd of the year. Dennison right point. Feeds it to the corner. Nobody home but a stillhead. Nick Kanadi lifts it high into the air. And a gentle push and a mild arc. And the old biscuit goes into the Grizzly zone. As Utah gets it to Dennison near side. Wearing number 22, the Merrimack product. Over to Mayhew. Who advances it off a of Gallant. And it rolls towards Idaho. Nilamak will get it to Kumatsi. who skates around Utah's net. 
Now to the near side, Kumatsis over the left point, veers off to the right. Kumatsis loses the puck and it exits the zone. He'll get gather it back as Ido touches up. Still Eds will throw it back into their own end as the Grizzlies will switch up forwards. Trevor Zins over to White. Zins started the season with Indy. Now center ice, Josh Wesley fires it around the boards. Trevor Zins, far corner gets the puck. He'll kind of curl it around Idaho's net towards Rodzinski. Now to Kuba, to Kawaguchi across as Idaho crosses the center ice as Zins steps over the line. He gathers it in the left point and wraps it around the boards. Teixeira, far corner, cuts it off. He'll hit it off the steelhead. Rodzinski skates over there. One hands it to White, who skates along the far goal line. White centers it. Shot saved by Januzzi. Actually, White got the puck from Nasher Donato, and White took the shot. White gets it back in neutral tries. He'll advance it ahead. As Rodzinski, left side, lefty shot goes over Januzzi's head in high. As White will tap it off a Grizzly stick. It goes to Rodzinski, far corner of the Grizzly zone. Rodzinski centers it off the skate. And the puck glides all the way out to center ice. Cuddle up across the center edge. He'll push it to his left for Bice, who steps over the line. Bice near side shot. Stick saved by Januzzi in the butterfly position. Puck ends up towards the far boards. As Ido comes up with it, Bice with two assists tonight, both in the first period. As he'll feed it up top. Reese Harsh over to Cuddle up. Left side, East centers it. It bounced off a stick as Murphy couldn't gather it. Now Utah far circle. Wesley over to Bokaj. Right wing, he'll step over the line, he'll skate towards the right circle. He swings and misses as he was looking for the toe drag in the near circle. Bokaj gets it back, he'll bounce it off of Murphy. As Aragon fires towards the net, and it's sticked away by Bice. Grizzlies roll back to the near corner. Aragon delivers a hit on Kudla as the stillhead's moving ahead. Harsh left wings out to Murphy, who steps over the line. He'll get it to the right side. Lefty shot, glove saved by Januzzi. He holds on as the shot was taken by Will Merchant over in the right wing. Her chance got eight goals this season, including one tonight. Five minutes and 50 seconds left in the second period. It's the Grizzlies three and the Stillheads two. We're back in one minute on the Grizzlies Hockey Network. Since 1939, America First has helped people start businesses, buy homes and cars, and achieve their financial goals. Today, our top priority is still the financial success of you and your family, which is why we're giving new members $100 when they sign up for a basic savings and checking account and another $100 when they upgrade to premium checking and enroll in and use direct deposit. So head to AmericaFirst.com today and join the credit union that always puts its members first. Why is Jerry Signer the number one Kia store in the Salt Lake region? Selection. We've got over 350 new Kias to choose from. Savings. Shop over 40 new Kia Sportage models and save up to $2,500 off when you buy. Jerry Signer has been the area's most trusted automotive source for over 40 years. Little wonder then how we've made thousands of friends to last a lifetime. Jerry Signer Kia, South Jordan. Five minutes and 50 seconds left in the second period. It's a Grizzlies three and the Stillheads two. Idaho has outshot Utah 12 to 6 in the second period. Draws him in the far circle. Tyler Penner for the Grizzlies. I believe that's Kumatsis for Idaho. And it is. The Arizona State product lose the draws. Dylan Fitz gets it out to center ice, but it's taken by Nick Kanadi, who tattoos it off the near boards. Idaho skates in. Really near him. Left side gets it across to the right. Shot by Kumatsis, and he fanned on it. Right side Kanadi back towards Kumatsis, who lets it go to. Niram over in the near corner. Niram drops it. Kumatsis near goal line gets pushed by Wickers. Wickers was featured in an article by Flow Hockey earlier today. You catch on Flow Hockey social media channels. Niram over there. Two on two battle in the corner. Luke Salem holds his ground on a bigger Willie Niram. Fitz trying to jab it away. Penner and our Curry look nearby. Action still in the corner. And the puck sports towards the high slot. Nick Canati will move it back towards Murray. As our Curry fires towards the net right wing, it goes wide. Salem taps off the near boards, goes back over to our Curry, moves it across. Ido danced around the far corner, across our Curry off the boards. He couldn't handle it. He knocks down Dylan Fitz. That's going to be a penalty. As Fitz was trying to accept the puck off the near boards, our Curry threw Fitz down, and it's going to be a Utah power play. Francisco, our Curry couldn't believe it, but he goes to the Rogers and Russell Legal Solutions holding cell. Two minutes for tripping. As there's 4.51 left in the second period. Boy, Francisco R. Curry has certainly been active and aggressive here tonight. He's on an NHL contract with the Dallas Stars. 
Mark Curry will turn 21 years old in June, native of Toronto, Ontario. So he's only 20 years old, scoring 20 goals here in his ECHL season debut. As he has 21 goals with the one he scored in the first period. Utah wins the draw. They skip from left to right as they're in the attack zone right now. Bocage over to Stapley. Back to Bocage, left point across to Mayhew. He gets it back to Bocage. Those two play catch. Bocage moves to Stapley, far goal line. Stapley trying to kick it out in front towards Cutler. It bounces back to Stapley. He directs it back to Bocage. He guides it back towards Stapley. Stapley now on the left point. We'll skate towards his right. Now he'll feed it to Bocage. He gets the Cutler gets the bouncing puck and he gets it back to Bocage right wing. He'll drop it from Mayhew. Guides it back towards Stapley. He feeds over to Cutler back to Stapley along the near boards. Back to Mayhew high slot over to Stapley. Near side, he feathers it towards the middle. Cutler one time tap bounces off the stillhead, and that was Milamak. And the stillheads get it near corner, and clearing it out is Will Merchant. Four stillheads will race off the ice. Grizzlies will lumber towards their bench. As we're halfway through Utah's power play, Grizz have a 3 2 lead. Both teams have one power play goal tonight. Mayhe races into the zone left side. He loses his balance. Murphy gets it, and he clears it out. Oh, they're going to call a penalty on Wade Murphy. Hooking's going to be the cause. See. Kind of made Mayhew lose his balance. And Murphy's going to get a penalty. So this game has been more tightly officiated than what we saw on Wednesday night. So Grizzlies going to get a five-on-three power play for 49 seconds. As Mayhew is trying to enter the zone from the left side, he lost his balance as Murphy hooked him from behind. The referee wants the Grizzlies to either call a timeout, and Utah has called its one timeout. Timeout on the Grizzlies here late in the second period. Francisco R. Curry got a tripping minor, 15.09 in. Wade Murphy's penalty came 16.20 into the second. So it's timeout Grizzlies. They will be on the five-on-three power play for 49 seconds. It's Utah 3, Idaho 2. Those Grizzlies are looking at this as a critical sequence in this game. You know, we had mentioned Idaho, who have been just about even in the goal differentials in both the first and third periods, and they are a plus 45 in the second frames, but the Grizzlies have the only goal here in the period. And obviously Utah right now has the five-on-three power play. The three on the ice for Idaho, Patrick Hudla, Jake Murray, and Jade Miller. For Utah, the five on the ice include Alex Bocage. Brett Stapley, Brandon Cutler, Fitz, and Mayhew with Cutler taking the face off. The fan chugs a beer on the video board, and the fans applaud. As Cutler will take the drop, he's in the far circle against Idaho's Jade Miller. Miller takes a lot of the big face offs for Idaho. Three minutes and 40 seconds left in the second period. It's Utah three, Idaho two. And as draw one by the Grizzlies, Bokosh, high slot, over to Mayhew. Back to Bocage, right side, over to Mayhew. High slot, he feeds it to Stapley behind the net. He'll kick it over to Cutler, back to Bocage. Just outside the near circle, over to Cutler near corner. Across to Stapley. Stapley behind his back, trying to get to Cutler. It's taken away as it still heads. Jade Miller, as he's falling down, wants a penalty as he clears it out. Januzzi skates towards the far corner. 22 seconds left in the five on three. Bocage gains center ice. Skates towards his left and drops for Fitz, for Fitz, who steps over the line. Idaho has a player lose their stick. Cutler far goal line over to Stapley, who couldn't handle it. Idaho races down the other end. Two on two. Miller crosses center ice, and he'll wrap it around the boards. As Cutler gets his stick back. Less than three minutes left in the second period. Coming out of the box is Francisco R. Curry. It's a five-on-four power play for the Grizzlies for a minute eight. Bokash skates towards the near corner, wraps it around to Fitz. Fitz been outstanding as of late. Over to Cutler, now to Mayhew. He gets to the near side for Stapley, who gets back checked by our Curry. Our Curry battles with Stapley. Our Curry gets hit in the back by Fitz. Taking it's Nick Canadi, who throws it around Idaho's net. Harsh moves to A.J. White. Two on two. White enters his zone. He'll skate towards the right side. Stapley pokes it away. White drops it for our Curry. Shot saved by Januzzi. Mayhew back checked. Our Curry takes it, trying to get it to White out in front. White couldn't get it. He gathers it off the end boards. Or make that the near wall. As White avoids a check of Berg. 30 seconds left in the five on four power play. Berg, left side gets to Mayhew, skates in. Mayhew's already got a power play goal tonight. Berg wraps it around the boards. Luke Manning chasing after it. He'll drop it for Messner. 
Messner, right point, stops, feeds it to Manning, who's still looking for his first pro goal. Manning across to Wesley. What timer goes just wide? Messner near side gets up top for Manning. Manning dangles, and he'll skate towards his right. Now Manning over in the right point, feeds it to Gallant. 142 and counting. Out, out Manning right side, one timer, saved by Kylie, and the puck flies all the way out off the protective netting. So Grizzlies couldn't capitalize on either the five on three or five on four. As we're back to five on five skating, draws going to be in the stillhead zone. As there's 137 left in the second, it's a Grizzlies three and the stillheads two. A lot of fun action here at Maverick Center. You're going to want to make sure you get your tickets for tomorrow night. 7-10 face-off. Your tickets to utahgrizzlies.com. Hunter takes the draw against Ty Pelton Bice, who has two assists for Idaho. And still heads. Win the draw. Trevor Zins crosses center ice. Utah skating from left to right here in the second period. Zins taps off the near glass. Kawaguchi chasing after it. He centers it over to Bice, who tips it to the far wing boards. Bice runs it down. He feeds up top to Zins. High slot. Righty shot is blocked away by Janucci. Radzinski around the wall. Bice, far goal line, centers the Master Donato. Righty shot goes wide. 110 and counting left in the second. As Radzinski rolls it along the boards, far corner. Dennison pushes ahead towards uh, the newest Grizzly, Blake Wells, who pushes his right. Aragon taps off the far boards. Action, the still head zone. As Idaho, puck turned over at the slot. Penner righty shot goes wide. Bice gets over to Zins. He feeds to Rodzinski at the near goal line of Idaho zone. He'll drop it for Keaton Master Donato. He gets a new try. So he gets around Stapley. Master Donato tried to dump it in, but it just got to the Utah blue line. Right wing pass connects to Cutler. He feeds it to the near corner and chases after. He tried to drop it for Stapley. He was skating a little bit too close towards Cutler. As there's less than half a minute left in the second period. Dumping it in is Milamak. As Puck ends up near, near side, Cutler gathers it. As he'll push ahead towards Manning. Manning gets it, drops it for Stapley, gets it back to Manning near corner. Manning trying to start the Stapley. Shot is blocked away as Jake Miller, uh, make that Murray, gets the center eye. Seven seconds left. He steps over the line. He'll drop it for Kumatsi. He fires left. He shot that goes wide. Two seconds left. Ido fires towards the net. It tapped off a stick. And that will do it for 40 minutes here at Maverick Center. As Grizzlies ended up a plus one in the second frame. McMessner scored a power play goal that was upon further review, 549 in. And after review, it was signaled a good goal. Both teams have one power play goal, but it's the Grizzlies' power play goal that's the difference in the game. With Messner scoring 549 into the second with Mick, with um, Kyle Mayhew gained the assists. Mayhew now has 16 power play assists this season. Well, we'll come back and recap the first two periods, and we'll also go over some scores from around the world of sports. We'll also give you an update on the other action in the Mountain Division. Once again, after 40 minutes of play, it's Utah 3, Idaho 2. This is the Grizzlies Hockey Network. Ties. I'm a confident vaccine driver, but mom's a little stressed about spending. Remember, breathe in. Now watch your speed and breathe out. Good. Even though we're watching our wallets, Les Schwab is still watching out for our safety. So it's right here. Help keep drivers and backseat drivers safe with Les Schwab Tires. Why is Jerry Siner the number one Kia store in the Salt Lake region? Selection. We've got over 350 new Kias to choose from. Savings. Shop over 40 new Kia Sportage models and save up to $2,500 off when you buy. Jerry Siner has been the area's most trusted automotive source for over 40 years. Little wonder then how we've made thousands of friends to last a lifetime. Jerry Siner Kia Salt Lake. At Black Bear Diner, you always get more. More choice. More amazing food. 
more value from huge breakfasts to delicious lunches and hearty dinners. Black Bear Diner has more for you. So get more when you want it, the way you want it, and get it today. Good old-fashioned family food, Black Bear Diner. Black Bear Diner. Our through two periods here at Maverick Center, and the Grizzlies lead the Stillheads 3-2. to two. Hi, everybody. I'm Tyson Whiting. The Grizzlies scored the first two goals of the night. That's Stapley, 344 into the first. is the Opton first goal of the game score. He scored from the near circle on the left wing as he fired at stick side past Jake Kiley. It's Stapley's 23rd of the area, second in the team in goals. He leads the club with 68 points this season. Luke Manning got his third assist of the year, and Brandon Cutler picking up his 27th assist. Cutler now has a point in seven of his last eight games. A minute and 11 seconds later, it was Tyler Penner, the Grizzlies' Iron Man, connecting on a rebound as the initial shot was taken by Dylan Fitz from the left wing. It bounced off to Kylie. Penner and Aragon were both in front of the net trying to collect it, and it was Penner that put it away for his 10th of the year. Fitz and Aragon got the assist. Idaho responded less than a minute later as Francisco R. Curry got a breakaway, just skated down the middle and fired at stick side pass Cranley. For his 21st of the year, Ty Pelton Vice got the assist. And then Idaho got a power play later in the first as Brandon Cutler got a holding minor, 13.45 in. And in the first half of the power play, it was Will Merchant scoring his eighth of the year with Wade Murphy and Ty Pelton Vice getting the assist. The score was tied at two after one period, with both teams taking 11 shots. In the second frame, Idaho outshot Utah 13-7. to The only goal scored on either side was Mick Messner on the power play. He scored 549 in. Wade Murphy got a roughing minor, 434 into the second, and that's why Utah got the power play, and Messner put it away. There was contact between Messner and Idaho goaltender Jake Kiley, but it looked like uh, Messner was pushed into Kylie by defenseman Nick Kennedy. Messner has been outstanding for the Grizzlies this season. His first year as a pro, he's got 15 goals and 20 assists. Kyle Mayhew has certainly been a star for the Grizzlies, and in particular on the Grizz power play. He has 16 power play assists, which ranks third among all league rookies. There was a five-on-three power play the Grizzlies had for 49 seconds. As Francisco R. Curry got a tripping minor, 15.09 in, and then a minute and 11 seconds later, Wade Murphy got a hooking minor, 16.20 in. Grizzlies called their one timeout and just couldn't find a way to get that grade A chance, either on the five on three or the five on four. So it stayed a 3 2 Utah lead, and that's where we sit now after 40 minutes of play. Among the Grizzlies, 18 shots, still in Fitz leads away with four. And if you're talking about guys over the last month and a half that have really stepped up big for the Grizzlies, you would look at the, to Dylan Fitz. Really, that was the case last year where Fitz was outstanding in the final two months of the regular season, and that led to the Grizzlies reaching the playoffs where they faced Idaho in the first round. Fitz, over his last 16 games, has 11 goals and seven assists, and obviously picked up another assist in the first period tonight. Fitz now has three assists in this series as he had two helpers, in the second period on Wednesday night, in Idaho's 6-2 victory over Utah. So he contributed to both the Utah's goals on Wednesday night with assists and obviously picked up an assist in Utah's second goal in the first period. So Dylan Fitz continues to be outstanding, and he leads Utah with four shots through two periods. Mick Messner has one goal on three shots, which ranks second on the team. Two shots each for Luke Manning and Tyler Penner. And one shot for Stapley, Berg, Aragon, Wesley, Gallant, Bocage, and Mayhew. Oddly enough, Brandon Cutler, who was second in the league in shots on goal this season, um, obviously has one assist, which came in Utah's first goal, but Cutler has zero shots through two periods. Cutler so far this season has taken 249 shots on goal. The only player with more is Toledo's. Brandon Hawkins. For the Stillheads, Wade Murphy and Keaton Mastro Donato lead the way with five shots. Will Merchant has one goal on three shots. Willie Neram and Francisco R. Curry each have two shots and a few other Stillheads with one shot through two periods. 
We're doing some scoreboard watching as we will the rest of the regular season. As there are seven games for the Grizzlies left in the regular year, six after tonight. Four of them will be at Maverick Center. Uh, for Utah, right now they're in fourth place in the Mountain Division. They're two points behind Tulsa for third place. And the Grizzlies have a four-point standing lead over Allen. Allen is in fifth. Rapid City with a victory tonight would tie Allen for fifth place in the division. And right now, late second period, get this, Rapid City leads Allen 5-2. to two. That game just going into the second intermission. Um, Rapid City is 2-2 two for two on the power play. It looks like the Stillheads are the uh, rush. They've got two goals from Blake Bennett. They also have goals from Will Rydell, Zach Hoffman, and Alex Aliardi. As you know, Allen's taking a ton of shots. Allen has outshot Rapid City 33 to 31. But Christian Prop has played a solid game in net, and really the two power play goals for Rapid City have made a big difference. As a rusher, two for two on the power play, and Allen is 0 for 4. So if you're a Grizzlies fan this week, you are rooting for Rapid City to defeat Allen. Um, and right now, heading into the second intermission, Rapid City leads Allen 5 to 2. So if the Rush hold on to win, they will be tied with Allen for fifth place in the Mountain Division with 57 standings points. Allen does have one game in hand on Rapid City and two games in hand against the Grizzlies. Looks like Tulsa has held on to defeat Wichita 3-1. to one. The score there as the Oilers got goals from Kyle Krenkovic, Dante Sheriff, and Eddie Matsushima. Shots are pretty close to even. Neither team had a power play goal. Tulsa gets a 3-1 to one victory at home against Wichita. And that means the Oilers extend their lead in third place with 65 points. And their winning percentage is now at the 500 mark as Tulsa goes to 29, 29-6-1 on the season. For Wichita, time is running out. They have 54 standings points and eight games left in the regular season. And their point percentage, which started the night at 429, just drops further in the last place. The other Mountain Division game, Kansas City leads Iowa 4-2. to two, That game halfway through the third period. So a lot of fun action around the league. I know tomorrow is going to be a lot of fun as well. Allen continues their series with Rapid City. Um, Wichita will host Tulsa tomorrow. Tonight, Tulsa hosted Wichita, and the scene shifts for tomorrow night's battle. Kansas City continues their series with the Iowa Heartlanders, and obviously the Grizzlies continue here with their series against Idaho. Tomorrow's going to be the third and final game of the set. Make sure to get your tickets to utahgrizzlies.com. You certainly want to be part of Grizzmania as Utah makes their run to the playoffs. When we come back, we'll go over some stats from the first two periods and some scores from the N NHL as well as some basketball scores, maybe a couple baseball scores along the way. Once again, after two periods of play, it's a Grizzlies three and the Stillheads two as Utah has gotten goals from Brett Stapley, Tyler Penner, and Mick Messner. This is the Grizzlies Hockey Network. From commercial to recreational truck accessories, Mountainland Truck Outfitters has got what you need. Flatbeds, spray and bed liners, lifts and leveling kits, wheels and tires. Mountainland Truck Outfitters proudly uses a brand you know and trust. And with our experienced, knowledgeable, and friendly staff, your visit here will be informative and enjoyable. Stop into our convenient location in Provo at 265 South 100 West or call 801-225-4637 to get a quote for your fleet or individual. This isn't just copper. It's our job. It's food on our family's tables. Without it, we couldn't stay in touch. It's what keeps our homes warm and our lights on. It's the power behind the team and a greener, brighter future. This isn't just copper. It's a proud Utah and a strong America. Second intermission here at Maverick Center. Utah leads Idaho 3-2. to two. One NHL game, Buffalo defeats New Jersey 5-2. to two. In the NBA, game over at the Delta Center. At halftime, the Jazz lead the Rockets 47-41. to 41. Jazz record is 29-44 and 44 this season. The Rockets are 37-35. and 35. In Major League Baseball, Braves win, Braves win. Braves scored... 
Seven runs in the top of the eighth inning. They defeat Philadelphia 9-3. Brewers over the Mets 3-1. Rays defeat the Blue Jays 8-2. Pirates go to 2-0 in the season. They defeat the Marlins 7-2. Games in progress. Top of the eighth inning. Yankees have a 2-1 lead over the Astros. After four innings, Arizona has a 3-1 lead over Colorado. Last night, Arizona scored 14 runs in the bottom of the third inning as they cruise to victory. Top of the fifth, Cleveland leads Oakland 3-1. to one. Halfway through the fifth inning, no score between the Red Sox and Mariners. Also halfway through, Giants have a 4-1 lead over the Padres. And bottom of the third inning, Dodgers have a 2-1 lead over St. Louis. Dodgers are 2-1 and one this season. Remember, they split a two-game series last week in Korea with the San Diego Padres. Here at Maverick Center, the Grizzlies are clinging to a one-goal lead. We will skate five-on-five five to start the third period. Both teams are one for four on the power play. Idaho has 11 scoring chances to Utah's 10. Grizzlies have won 18 face-offs. Idaho's won 13. Grizzlies have delivered 17 hits according to the off-ice officials. Idaho has 12. Grizzlies have 10 giveaways, including seven in the second period. Idaho has seven. So it should be a fun, a really fun final third, final frame. And who knows, maybe we'll go past regulation. That happened a couple times uh, over in Idaho earlier this season when these teams went head to head. Utah is just two and eight against Idaho this season. Both victories came at Idaho Central Arena. We'll see if the Grizzlies can get on the board in the season series here at Maverick Center. As Utah leads 3-2 to two behind goals from Brett Stapley and Tyler Penner, as well as a second-period power play goal from Mick Messner. We'll come back and have third-period action on the other side as we've got a pretty good Friday night crowd, and hopefully tomorrow night will be an outstanding crowd as well as a fan is unsuccessfully chugging a beer. Ah, it looked like he finished it, but he took a minute and a half to get it done. This is the Rio Tinto Kennecott Intermission Report on the Utah Grizzlies Hockey Network. Maverick's new bean to cup machines always deliver a freshly ground cup of coffee on demand so you can enjoy any of our premium roasts at their best day or night hot or ice enjoy a fresh cup today at black bear diner you always get more more choice more amazing food more value so get more and get it today black bear diner since 1939, America First has helped people start businesses, buy homes and cars, and achieve their financial goals. Today, our top priority is still the financial success of you and your family, which is why we're giving new members $100 when they sign up for a basic savings and checking account, and another 100 when they upgrade to premium checking and enroll in and use direct deposit. So head to AmericaFirst.com today and join the credit union that always puts its members first. Why is Jerry Signer the number one Kia store in the Salt Lake region? Selection. We've got over 350 new Kias to choose from. Savings. Shop over 40 new Kia Sportage models and save up to $2,500 off when you buy. Jerry Signer has been the area's most trusted automotive source for over 40 years. Little wonder then how we've made thousands of friends to last a lifetime. Jerry Signer Kia, South Jordan. always gives you more ways to save on top of our lower than low prices. And when you download the Smiths app, you can enjoy over $500 in savings every week with digital coupons and earn fuel points to save up to a dollar per gallon at the pump. With a Boost membership, you'll save even more with double fuel points and free delivery. Discover more ways to save big every day. Smiths, fresh for everyone. Are about set for third period action here at Maverick Center. Utah leads three to two. The Grizz scored first tonight. In fact, the Grizzlies had the first two goals tonight. They are 15 0 and 1 at home when scoring first this season. Utah's got a one goal two uh, lead heading into the third. They are 12 and 1 at home when leading after two periods. And really, a big reason as to why the Grizzlies are even in contention for a playoff spot. And after off the playoff start today, the Grizzlies would be in. One has been their performance at home. You know, they're 19, 10, and 2 at home this season. And 40 of these 61 standings points have come at home. They've been pretty good on the penalty kill 
at home, and they've done a good job winning the close games. They're 7-1-2 and two in one goal games at home, and really another reason as to why the Grizzlies are fresh into the playoff race and in fourth place in the Mountain Division has been their success on the road over the last, I'd say, three months. You know, you look at 20, the calendar turning from 2023 to 2024 being a big difference. Grizzlies started the year 0-11 on the road, but they have held their own away from Maverick Center with a record of 10-12-1 over their last 23 road games. It's game two of six straight at home. Grizzlies in the second of a three-game set against Idaho. Obviously, tomorrow night will be the series finale. Then the first place Kansas City Mavericks will be in town next Friday, next Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. Um, eight days from now, April 6th, will be Fan Appreciation Night presented by Les Schwab. Grizzlies will end the regular season on the road with two games against the Idaho Stillheads at Idaho Central Arena. And who knows, I almost have a feeling with as close the standings are right now, I get a feeling that the Grizzlies and Stillheads in Boise, April 12th and 13th, will decide either playoff seeding or it will decide whether the Grizzlies make the playoffs altogether. It's going to be a lot of fun as Grizzmania is alive and well, the hockey renaissance in the Salt Lake Valley. To start the third period, it's going to be the same five that started the game for the Grizzlies, Luke Manning, Brett Stapley, and Brandon Cutler with a defensive pairing of Josh Wesley and Kyle Mayhew. For Idaho, it's going to be Willie Miram out there on the right wing, taking the draw is Jade Miller. And on the left side is Connor Milamok. The defensive pairing is Reese Harsh and Patrick Hudla. Draw one by Idaho for the first time this season. Matt Register is out of the Idaho lineup just due to rest, almost as Greg Popovich would do with the San Antonio Spurs. Load management, if you will. That's what they call it in basketball. Idaho gets to the right wing as Niram flubs it in as Wesley gathers it. He skates around Januzzi's neck. Grizzly skate from right to left as we see it from high top section 114. Puck is literally kicked ahead by Idaho. Milamok looking for his first pro goal. He loses the puck as there's a helmet laying along the far side. The puck hits the helmet as still heads. Far side trying to fire towards the net. It bounced off of Wesley and rolls to Januzzi who covers up in the crease as we get our first whistle. 38 seconds into the third period. So is going to come back towards Januzzi. Grizzlies in the black jerseys with white numbers and professional green trim. Two players making their professional debuts tonight, Luke Salem and Blake Wells. And i got to say, both guys looked impressive. Salem's played a lot of minutes tonight. He's out there on the ice with Quinn Wickers taking the draws. Gallant. He's out there with Bo Kajenberg. Ido wins the draw. They literally kick it to the far corner. Kawaguchi, last year's team MVP, gets to Murray. He gets pushed in the side by Gallant. As Salem trying to hack it away. Wickers as well. Murray very strong holding his ground, but the puck squirts along the far side to Utah. Bocage to Berg down the middle. He'll throw it to the right side for Galan, who skeets down the right side back. And Johnny scores! Cole Galan gets his 12th of the year, and the Grizzlies extend the lead. It's now 4-2. to two. Well, you talk about the speed of Cole Galan. Raced along the right side, under control, and just got in front of Kylie and fired a beautiful backhand shot as Gallant just split the double team, and that backhand shot went right over the left shoulder of Jake Kylie. That's got to be one of the best plays in the league this week as Gallant gets his 12th of the season. He was certainly doing. Gallant scores a huge insurance goal for the Grizzlies a minute into the third. Grizzlies win the draw. They're back deep in their own zone. As Utah pushes ahead to Aragon, who crosses center ice. He'll backhand it in as Kylie behind his net. Force it to the far side. As Kawaguchi taps it ahead, looking for Masha Donato. Pitts took it away. And as he'll feed it to the far corner and chase after it. Rodzinski gathers it, throws it to White, who pushes to the far side. As Masha Donato crosses center ice, Keaton's his first name. He'll dump it in. Kawaguchi chasing after it. Kawaguchi near goal line gets taken away by the Iron Man. Penner will lift it off the glass, and the puck hit the ops towards the Idaho line. As Trevor Zins gathers it, Grizzly sneaking line change in. Ed to Pelton Vice, who plays it about waist high, gets the still cattle up by Dennison as Wells chasing after it. Puck goes towards Gallant. He waits for Wells to tag up as Gallant dumps it in. Near corner, Reese Harsh gathers it deep in the stillhead zone. Now across, as Idaho skips to the center ice. Bice with two assists tonight, tries to dump it in. It's gathered by Dennison, who pushes the Wells. Two on three. Wells over the line. 
Lays it for Messner, who overskates it. Now it's taken by Merchant. Over to Murphy. Back to Merchant. Right side, lefty shot. Saved by Januzzi as it bounced off his glove. Puck still in play. Far side. Murphy up top to Kudla. Now to the near side for Bice. Who centers to Murphy. Bank to Bice. Over to Kudla. It tapped off of his stick, and it goes out to center ice. Idaho resets right wing. Bice gets around. Wells enters the zone, and Messner divorces him from the puck at the Utah blue line. Idaho keeping it in. Murphy. Far side gets up top to Kanadi. Dinging off the near boards for Kudla. Kudla gets held up by Wells. Wells loses his stick. Kudla dances around. He skates towards his left. He'll throw it to the left side. One timer and a score. What a blast by Wade Murphy. He just fired the liner right past Januzzi. And it's now a 4 3 game. Murphy gets his 25th of the season. The Idaho fans in attendance go nuts. Cam McGuire on the other side of Section 114. The Idaho broadcaster goes nuts. We still had to say, we're not dead yet. As Kudla fired it to Murphy, and the Murphy one-timer. In baseball, they call that exit velocity. I got to imagine the exit velocity on that shot was probably about 115 off the stick of Murphy. So it's 4-3 Grizzlies. Boy, that insurance goal comes huge. 58 seconds into a score by Gallant. As it's one goal Utah lead. Murphy with the goal, Kudla, and Kanadi with the assist. The two defensemen that are on the ice for Idaho. Deep in the stillhead zone, puck wobbles towards the near corner. Kanadi over there chips it ahead. Near him pushes out to center ice as our Curry one hands it in. Januzzi behind his net gets chased by Near him. Januzzi bounced it off of Near him as the puck hippity hops onto Wesley who gets to Stapley. He sauces ahead off the near glass for Manning, who gets around Kanadi. Manning strong with the puck. So he gets thrown into the near corner. Ido takes it away. Kumats East with great speed, crosses the center ice down the middle. He steps over the line, surrounded by three Grizzlies. He skates in, gets tripped up, shot, saved by Januzzi. Kumats East wants a call, but none to be had. He skate five on five. Berg stops near the Grizzlies bench. He'll drop it off as Gallant crosses center ice. He's already got a goal tonight. He feeds it to his left for Cutler. Cutler left point, left. He shot, is sticked away by Zins. Trevor Zins gets tripped up in the near corner. No call right in front of the referee. As left side, Gallant gets it to Cutler. Near side, shot saved by Kylie. And he holds on as Cutler takes his first shot of the contest. And that was from the near circle around the dot. Kylie just gathered it for a body save. 16.03 left in the third. So action really picking up. We've already had two goals in the third period. Cole Gallant scored 58 seconds in with Berg and Bokosh getting the assist. And then Wade Murphy... On a one-timer from the far side, left wing. It's his 25th of the season with Kudla and Kanadi getting the assist. Draw one by the Grizzlies. They're in the attack zone. Bokaj drops it for Wickers. He's got three goals this season. He'll skeet towards the near corner. Gone over there as well as two still heads. Zins holds his ground as Idaho dives. Murphy gets out to center. I still heads want a penalty. Idaho enters the zone. Milamak gets hit by Bokaj. Murphy skates over there. He gathers the puck, throws it up top, but the puck wobbles off his stick. Berg gathers it. He crosses center ice. He'll lift it in as Grizzlies change up around him. Berg with good speed gets held up along the end boards by Zins as the stillhead goes down, and that was Radzinski. Ahead to Miller near the Grizzlies bench. He crosses center, and he'll drive it in as we get some real pushing and shoving near the Grizzlies bench. As play is stopped, the penalty is going to be called. The armor's raised. Who's it going to be on? Looks like Milamok got pretty upset with the Grizzly. He was near Bokaj and Berg. Milamok, let's see, he's going to the box. Fitzgates over towards center ice. Referee still sorting it out. Let's see if it's a member of both teams or if it's just a Grizzly. Bokaj is going to the box for Utah. So it looks like matching roughing minors. A member of both teams are going to the box. Bokaj will go in for Utah, and Connor Milamok will go in for Idaho. And any longtime Stillheads fan will remember his father, who is one of the Stillheads legends, one of five jerseys there, retired at Idaho Central Arena. Play stopped at Neutrice. I believe that's where the faceoff's going to be near the Grizzlies bench, as there's a lot of active action near the Grizzlies bench. Now they're talking it over. Draw might be in the Grizzlies zone. We are going to skate four on four. This opens up the ice a little bit. Maybe a goal gets scored either way. Idaho looking to tie it up, and obviously the Grizzlies looking for some more insurance. In four on four situations this year, the Grizzlies have scored three goals, and they have allowed one. 
So it's matching Ruffy Miners. Milamok for Idaho and Bokonch for the Grizzlies. Draws going to be the far circle in the Grizzlies zone. State Blue will take the draw against our Curry. And the draw sports towards the middle and along the near boards. Wesley chases after it. He gathers the puck and gets it out to center ice. Cutler takes it away. As he took it away from Asher Donato. Near circle shot is blocked away by Harsh. Now Stapley along the near wall gets up top to Cutler left point. They'll bounce it off the boards and chase after it. Cutler gets pushed along the wall by Harsh. And Idaho one hands it out to center ice. Running it down is Masha Donato. Right side centers it over to Cutler. And Wesley gets a stick in the way as it bounced off a of Cutler's skate. Now Cutler left side couldn't reach it. He'll chase after it. He gets it in the left side. Cutler near circle. Lefty shot. And that one goes wide as he went stick side on Kylie but just missed the net. Luke Manning back over there. Idaho wanted to call for too many men on the ice. They'll skate off as Grizzlies peel back into their own zone. 113 and counting left in the four on fours. We're five and a half minutes into the third period. It's Grizzlies four and the Stillheads three. Messner left side gets blasted along the boards by Kanadi, but Messner keeps his feet. Kanadi with the puck. Messner on the back check. Messner trying to take it away from him, but Kanadi advances ahead. As Merchant left point pass towards Kawaguchi, he gets cut off by Luke Salem, who's been very impressive in his home in his home and pro debut. Wickers ahead to Manning at center ice. He glanced off of his stick as Murphy gets there about the same time as Manning. Far circle, Idaho gathers it. They skate from left to right here in the period. They'll feed it off the near boards. It goes to Merchant, who scored some big goals for Idaho. He'll skate along the right wing. He'll take a shot saved by Janutzi. Salem trying to cut off the angle. Salem, I believe, is sporting a mustache. Murray over to the far side. He'll skate towards the far goal line now around the net as he's being channeled by Berg. As Murray feeds it up top to Kanadi, right point. He'll glance it towards Bice, who gets it back to Kanadi, who danced around the right point. Now he swaggers towards his left and gets it towards Bice, who skates towards his left. Bice now in the high slot. He'll feed it off the of body onto Janutzi, who kicks it to Dennison, who fires it off the near boards. Murray gets back check. Berg took the puck away as the puck glides towards the far circle. Grizzlies have it. Gallant over to Dennison in the near side. He drops it back to Gallant. They're back to skating five on five. No one scored. I'm not even sure there was more than one or two shots either way. Grizzlies in the attack zone lose the puck. Ido comes back the other way. Milamak crossing center ice. He'll flub it in. Chase after it in the far corner. He'll dance it around for Murphy. Wade Murphy back towards Milamak. Texera pokes it away. Milamak over with Murphy. And we get a whistle. Hand pass to the call with an even 13 minutes left in the third. Time out of the ice. We'll take one as well. Both teams have one goal here so far in the third as Cole Gallant got his 12th of the year, 58 seconds in. Idaho's Wade Murphy responded 246 into the third period. It's the Grizzlies four and the Stillheads three. We're back in one minute on the Grizzlies Hockey Network. Schwab tires. I'm a constant backseat driver, but mom's a little stressed about spending. Remember, breathe in. Now watch your speed and breathe out. Good. Even though we're watching our wallets, Les Schwab is still watching out for our safety. So it's right here. Help keep drivers and backseat drivers safe with Les Schwab tires. It's the Grizzlies four and the Stillheads three as there's an even 13 minutes left in regulation. Idaho has outshot Utah 29 to 20. Draws can make new tries. Tyler Penner will take it against Ty Pelton Bice. Bice with two assists tonight and a plus two rating. For the Grizzlies, Dylan Fitz leads Utah with four shots. It's been a very balanced attack with the four goals Utah has scored. Nobody has a multiple point game yet. As draws in the far circle off the Grizzlies is going to have a lot of success down the road. They're going to need that balanced attack, and they've gotten that tonight. Utah wins the draw. Wesley directs it across to Aragon, who gets the center ice, and he'll dump it in. Fitz battles with Brodzinski, who gets the puck, and he'll toss it ahead as he still has to get a right wing pass out to Murphy, who crosses the center ice. He'll move it to his left. Utah says, or Ido says that Penner played it with a high stick. Now Penner delivers a shot, and we got a penalty as Francisco R. Curry. Laying in front of the crease, Tyler Penner is going to sit for two minutes as our Curry 
slow to get to his feet. Tyler Penner can't believe it. But the third-year pro out of Colgate will go to the Rogers and Russell Legal Solutions holding cell. Penner gets two minutes for cross-checking as he shakes his head back and forth, wearing a net guard and sporting number 21. 12.41 left in the third period. Draws him in the Grizzly zone where Dante Genuzzi has saved 26 of 29. Grizzlies will have Messner and Gallant out there as well as Wesley and Mayhew on the penalty kill. Idaho has A.J. White taking the drive. He's got Nurem to his left, Kawaguchi to his right. Up top is Mastro Donato and Reese Harsh. Ido wins the draw harsh over to Master Donato. Soft pass, Master Donato gathers it and fires it off the far wing boards at the point. As Kawaguchi over to White, back towards White from near him. Now harsh in the high slot over to Kawaguchi. Left circle. He'll take a lefty shot and it's blocked away by Januzzi. As Mayhew has a tap off his stick near a corner. Near him rolls it along the boards. Kawaguchi left point. Skates towards the circle. He'll throw it to near him. Down the middle, righty shot saved by Januzzi. Puck will wobble towards the near corner. Master Donato gathers it. He'll feed it up top to Harsh, right side. He'll direct it to Kawaguchi, who skates towards the far circle. Kawaguchi bank towards Harsh. He gets checked by Messner. Messner pokes it away. Chasing after it's Jake Kiley, well out of his net. He'll throw it into the Stillhead's bench and stop play with 11.55 left in the third. Fans want a delay of game penalty, but that's kind of the place, that's the perfect place for Jake Kiley to put it. Because obviously, when you got the bench area right there, if the glass was there, it would have tapped off the glass. And so that's why no delay of game call, even though there's a ton of referees sitting in front of me in section 114 that want Utah to be on the uh, five on, to, you know, to be even up four on four. As the power play is still Idaho's with a minute and 14 seconds. So it was a good call, no delay of game, as the, it would have bounced off the glass had there been glass in front of the bench area. Ido wins the draw. Cudlow will tattoo it off the near boards as it goes to Merchan, who pushes his left. As our Curry over the line, drops it for Murphy. Idaho's in the attack zone as Murphy skates towards the near corner over to our Curry, gets up top to Cudlow. Cudlow fires to our Curry. What timer he scores on an almost impossible angle at the goal line. That's Idaho's second power play goal of the night, and we're tied at four. Our Curry gets the second of the game. And that angle that he scored on, on the one-timer, that was right at the near goal line, just firing it over Januzzi's right shoulder. That was scored on an almost impossible angle. However, it looked like Januzzi didn't close up the near side post, the near post, and left some room for our Curry. And because of that, it looked like it actually fired over Januzzi's left shoulder. So Francisco, our Curry gets the second of the game, and... 22nd of the season and he showed right there why he's got an NHL contract he's played a good game our Curry with the goal Cudlet and Murphy with the assist puck ends up out of play new tries as Idaho won the draw they try to move it ahead to bounce off a Manning stick and out of play as a fan in section 112 comes away with a souvenir the three officials are talking it over it was near the Idaho blue line it'd be an unlucky break if a power play was awarded either side Looks like Tyler Kesson, one of the linesmen, is pointing to the line. I think they were talking about where the draw was going to be, not whether it was delay of game. Draw is going to be in the stillhead zone as they were talking about where, I, where it went out of play. So it's going to be a draw in the stillhead zone near circle. So it's anybody's game tied at four with 11.29 left in the third. Francisco Curry has two goals for the stillheads. Wade Murphy's had an outstanding game. Murphy and... Uh, and you know, Murphy's got a multiple-point game. Patrick Kudla has two third-period assists for the Stillheads. Drop, one by Idaho in front of their net. Jake Murray will skate around his net. He's an outstanding skater and is 6-3 to match. He's a pretty good prospect. Idaho bats it out the center ice. As Tyler Kesson, the linesman, gets out of the way. Cutler throws it to the near corner, taken by Nick Kanadi, who runs it down. He'll curl it around Idaho's net as the Stillheads. Murray crosses the center ice. He'll loft it into the near corner. Mayhew gets there first, and he'll direct it off to Cutler. Kanadi gets a wobbling puck. He fires towards the net, and it skips away. Miller, far side, fires towards the net. That one misses wide. Murray tries to one-hand it towards the near corner. Skating over there is Milamak. He'll get to Kumatsis. Kumatsis rolls along the near boards. Murray wasn't home at the near point, and it goes all the way into the stillhead zone. As Grizzlies reshuffle the deck personnel-wise, 
10-40 and counting left in the third as we're tied at four. Idaho has outshot Utah 31-20. to High drama here at Maverick Center as Kumat Cease gets the center ice and he'll fly it in. Januzzi behind his net. We'll move it to the near side. Kawaguchi challenges him, but the puck ends up with Salem. who gets the Berg near side or far side. Berg crosses center ice right wing. Chasing after it's Bokaj. He gets there about the same time as Zins. Zins drops it for Rodzinski, who skates around Idaho's net. Rodzinski with outstanding speed will tap it off the near glass as Wickers has to go past him, and icing is on the stillheads. Keenan Kelly, the assistant coach, doesn't agree with that. He thinks Wickers could have played the puck. And the draw comes back towards Jake Kiley, the Idaho goaltender, who has stopped 16 of 20. The backup for Idaho tonight is Brian Thompson, who saved 32 of 34 on Wednesday as Idaho won 6 to 2. Gallant will take the draw. He scored 58 seconds into the third period. He now has 12 goals and 32 assists this year. Draw one by Idaho. Radzinski moves it around Idaho's net. Now to the near side. Mastro Donato, who has 22 goals and 17 assists, will move it out to center ice. Wickers throws it back in. Idaho gathers the puck skating from left to right. Across the Zins. Outlet pass. Taps off a white stick. It goes deep into the Grizzly zone. Luke Salem glides over there. He gathers the puck far side. He'll bounce it off the white. Now Mastro Donato, far side, gets over to White, the stillhead's captain. Now to Kawaguchi, feeds up top to Radzinski, far point. He'll wrap it around the boards. White drops it off, Mastro Donato, far circle. Skips it across to Zins, right side. Zins being challenged by Bokaj as Zins throws it towards the near goal line. Kawaguchi dances around as he's being shadowed by Penner. Penner pushes Kawaguchi along the near boards. White feeds it up top, Radzinski, high slot. Lefty shot is blocked by Aragon. Now left side, Zins fires towards the net. It's blocked by Master Donato. Now up top, Radzinski has a glance off his sticking out to center ice as he couldn't keep the line. Radzinski over to Zins as he still heads back in their own zone. As they'll tap it off the near boards, Pelton Bice crosses center ice. He steps over the line, and now he drops it for Wade Murphy. Fires a shot saved by Januzzi as the puck glides towards the far side. Kudla over in the left point, Dangles. Now he gets the harsh right side. He'll fire a righty shot that's blocked by Dennison. Fitz gets the puck. He'll skeet down the middle. He's now at new trice. Right side. He has it batted by Cudlip, and it goes back into the Grizzlies zone. Dennison, left side, new trice. He'll dump it in. Chasing after it's Blake Wells. He got redirected on the way, so no icing. Cudlip directs it across to Harsh. As Harsh outlets it ahead towards Bice, who couldn't reach it. Goes back to Harsh, who's in the Idaho zone. He'll drop it to the far circle to Cudlip. Back to Harsh. He directs it to his right for Murphy, who crosses center, and he'll fly it in. Long-distance flight, bounces in the far corner of the Grizzly zone. Wesley around the net, one-handed towards Wells, who gets a good shoulder check from Kanadi, who pound for pounds one of the tougher players in the league. Kanadi near side, throws a bank deeper into the stillhead zone for Jake Murray, who skates around his own net to the far side, head towards near him off his stick. Mayhew left point, lefty shot. Love saved by Kylie, and he holds on with an even eight minutes left in regulation. Well, it's been an interesting one here tonight. Francisco R. Curry's got two goals. As Wade Murphy's had a good game. He has one goal and two assists for the Grizzlies. Nobody has a multiple point game. Utah's gotten goals from Brett Stapley, Tyler Penner. They both scored in the first period. Mick Messner scored a second period power play goal. And Cole Gallant, 58 seconds into the third, got his 12th of the year. But it's two unanswered by Idaho as we're tied at four. Grizzlies win the offensive zone draw. Mayhew over to Cutler, fires towards the net, and it's blocked away. Rebound goes to Idaho. They'll lift it out to center ice. Puck skips Grizzlies. Moving out to the left side, Cutler re-enters the zone. He'll throw it across Manning. Stapley right side, sharp angle shot saved by Kylie. Manning hacking away. Kylie makes the save. Arm is raised by the referee, and a penalty is going to be called on Idaho. And as cross-checking is going to be called, and Stapley got hit. Cutler was in the area. And it looks like it's going to be a Utah power play with 7.38 left in the third. Willie Neerham can't believe it, but he's going to the box. Two minutes for cross-checking. 7.38 left in the third. Grizzlies will have Cutler taking the draw. He's got Fitz to his left and Bocage to his right. Up top is the University of Denver connection. Mayhew and Stapley, we each have championship rings as they won the Frozen Four for Denver back in 2022. Draw one by the Grizzlies. Brett Stapley over in the high slot. they will fire towards the net. It's kicked away by Kylie. Smoke him if you got him. We're tied up four here late in regulation. 
Cutler over to Bocas. Grizzlies are on the power play. Bocas surveys along the near boards, gets to Mayhew, directs it over to Stapley. Back towards Mayhew in the high slot. He'll dance around. He'll feed it back to Stapley. Well, Stapley over to Bocas. Back to Mayhew. One timer goes wide. Stapley far side whips it around the boards. It's run down by Bocas. He tried to hold the line but couldn't. Out of new tries. Turnover. Reese Harsh one on two steps over the line. Right side. He'll throw it to the corner and chase after it. Harsh gets pushed in the back by the two University of Denver players. Stapley gathers it, and he'll advance it to Bocage. Bocage drops it for Mayhew across the center ice. Mayhew over the line, left side, fakes it to Fitz. Now Glide kind of does a half circle in the high slot. He gets the cutler back towards Mayhew. He directs it to the right side for Gallant. Back to Mayhew, high slot, lefty shot. And that one's blocked away. Might have hit his own guy in Cutler. As it still heads, will curl it back to center ice. Bokaj back of the Utah line as the fans take up a let's go Grizzlies chant. As Utah drops it for Josh Wesley. Wesley gallops out to center ice. He'll drop it for Gallant. He crosses the center ice. He'll fly it in as the puck bounces off the end boards of the Idaho zone. Kylie throws it to the far corner. Now right side, lefty shot, and a score! Grizzlies score! I think it's Luke Manning getting his first as a pro. 6-16 left in the third. Adam Berg's going to skate to the bench first. Berg was in the area, so is Manning. Save that puck, Jackson Hepper. As Luke Manning gets his first as a pro, and it's about as big as it's going to get. As Utah takes a 5-4 lead, as Grizzlies now have two power play goals. As the shot was taken by Messner, rebound on to Manning. And Luke Manning, that's a moment he'll never forget. As not only do the Grizzlies... Take a 5-4 lead. All the fans get cheeseburgers. Go to the Carl's Jr. app. And for Luke Manning, that's an outstanding time to pick up your first as a pro. Fans are going nuts here at Maverick Center. As we're back to skating 5-on-5. Five five. It's Grizzlies 5, and it still has 4. Luke Manning gets the goal. The assists go to Mick Messner and Adam Berg. Drop center ice. As Grizzlies come up big here in the third period. They led three to two after two periods. Both teams have two goals here in the third. Action deep in the Idaho zone. Still heads race out to center ice. Kumatsis cross the center and he'll lift it in as the puck goes out of play into row one of section 115. 603 left in the third period. Special teams have certainly played a bigger factor here tonight than they did on Wednesday. In fact, the Grizzlies were 0 for 2 on the power play. Idaho did not have a single power play on Wednesday. He's doing the math. I think both teams have two power play goals tonight, and they certainly do. Grizzlies 2 for 6. Idaho is 2 for 5. Puck goes deep into the stillhead zone. As Aragon over there along with Wells. Wells, he played at AIC earlier this season. Started his college career playing four years at UMass Lowell. Left side, Mayhew shot. is blocked away by Murray. Now Blake Wells with a shot that goes wide. Wells, a left shooter. And Utah gets up top to Mayhew, left point. He'll direct it around the boards. Murray gets cut off by Aragon, but taking the puck is Idaho with five and a half minutes left in the third. Still had Sky it out to center ice. It's gloved and dropped by Mayhew. He'll push it ahead. Puck got deflected off the stick of Luke Manning. He's got to be on cloud nine right now, scoring his first pro goal. He had 10 goals. Earlier this season at the University of St. Thomas. Idaho deep in their own zone as still heads. Jake Murray surveys. Long range pass ahead to the right side. Kawaguchi got a piece of it as it goes deep into the Grizzlies zone. Kawaguchi and Wickers hold each other up as Luke Salem dances around. He was the captain at St. Lawrence University earlier this season. Long range pass tipped off a cutler stick deep into the still head zone. It's run down by. Patrick Kudla, he'll roll to Kawaguchi, moves it ahead. Down the middle, A.J. White skates into the zone, gets double teamed. Stapley will clear it back to center. Kudla gets the skipping puck at the Idaho line. Grizzlies make a line change. Four and a half minutes left in the third. Idaho re-enters the zone. Mastro Donato, right point, righty shot, saved by Januzzi. Rebound shot goes wide. That was taken by Kawaguchi with 431 left in the third. Timeout on the ice. We'll take one as well. Luke Manny gets his first pro goal, 13-44 in, and it's on the power plays. The Grizzlies have a 5-4 lead. This is the Grizzlies Hockey Network. Why is Jerry Siner the number one Kia store in the Salt Lake region? Selection. We've got over 350 new Kias to choose from. 
savings. Shop over 40 new Kia Sportage models and save up to $2,500 off when you buy. Jerry Seiner has been the area's most trusted automotive source for over 40 years. Little wonder, then, how we've made thousands of friends to last a lifetime. Jerry Seiner, Kia, Salt Lake. At Black Bear Diner, you always get more. More choice, more amazing food, more value. From huge breakfasts to delicious lunches and hearty dinners, Black Bear Diner has more for you. So get more when you want it, the way you want it, and get it today. Good old-fashioned family food, Black Bear Diner, Black Bear Diner. It's a, it's Grizzlies five, and the still adds four, as there's four and a half minutes left in regulation. I'm Tyson White, and we've had a barn burner here at Maverick Center. Ido wins the draw. They're in the attack zone. Rodzinski throws it in deep as Dennison holds up a still head as the glass goes swaying back and forth. Go out in the area. Puck kicks towards the far corner. A.J. White, the still head's captain, gets up top to Zenz. Zins down the middle, veers off to the right. Zins now on the right point, gets up top, but Berg gets a stick in the way as the puck wobbles outside towards the stillhead zone. Berg at neutralized, waiting for Bocage to clear as Berg lifts it in. Grizzlies at the end of a shift as Idaho back in their own end, delayed offside as Bocage will skate back to neutralize. Idaho with the puck deep in their own zone. As they skate from left to right here in the third. As Idaho down the middle, Rudzinski will skate out to neutralize. Left wing pass, does it connect to Miller? Grizzlies say no, and the linesmen agree. Icing is on the still heads with 3.46 left in the third. Same two teams here tomorrow night. Grizzlies are hoping it's a rubber match. Idaho won 6-2 on Wednesday. Grizz with a 5-4 lead, and it's really been an outstanding game. Grizzlies score the first two goals of the contest. Brett Stapley and Tyler Penner about a minute apart. Idaho responded with two goals later in the, in the frame. McNessner scored the only goal in the second period. Both teams have scored twice in the third with Luke Manning getting his first as a pro on a power play, on a rebound, on a shot taken by either Messner or Berg, 13-44 in. As draw one by Idaho, they skate from left to right. They cross center ice. Kanadi dumps it in. As Messner chases and make that make, he chases after it. A roll to Aragon, who lifts it over Kanadi's head. Zenz chases after. He gets it in the stillhead zone near side. Make that Jake Murray, who skates around Fitz. Murray, the 6 3 defenseman, crosses center ice, dangles, gets to the Grizzlies line, dumps it in. Murray over skates a rebound off of Januzzi's pads. Puck end up, ends up in the far corner. Murray in the area, Fitz lifts it out to center ice. The puck hipping the ops deep into the stillhead zone, and it's going to be icing on the Grizzlies with 3.08 left in the third. Fans take them a let's go Grizzlies chant. Draws him in the far circle. Ty Pelton Bice will take the draw against Tyler Penner, the Grizzlies Iron Man, sporting a beard and a neck guard across his neck. Idaho's net is empty with 3.08 left in the third. Utah's up 5 to 4. Idaho wins the draw far side. They're without Matt Register for the first time this season. Their star defenseman still is now on the right side. Their net is empty. Kumbla drops it for our Curry. He's got two goals tonight. Takes a shot and is blocked by Fitz's stick. Wesley trying to push to Aragon. Kumbla took it away. Kyle skates towards the near goal line. Stearns out front. Shot saved by rebound. Shot saved by Januzzi as well. Murphy, far circle. Shot is blocked away by Fitz. Is sticking and flies out of play. With 2.43 left in the third. Boy, pretty early for Everett Sheen to pull his goaltender. As there's 2.43 left in the third. It's 5-4 Grizzlies. You know, normally you'd probably see it minute and a half, two minutes or so, but... With three minutes left in regulation, Everett Sheen pulling his goaltender. Draws him in the far circle. Six on five, Idaho's net's empty. Luke Manning will take the draw against Ty Pelton Bice. Manning's on point to maybe be the first star of the game tonight with the game-winning goal. 
As draw one by the Stillheads. Now Utah trying to clear it out. Stapley pushing out to center ice. Cutler chasing after it. Our Curry gets there first. Our Curry, the 20-year-old, skates around his net or in front of his net. Now our Curry, strong with the puck, gets towards center ice. He'll chip it to the near side, looking for uh, looking for Milamok. Wesley with the puck. He'll tap it to the far side. Now it's at neutralize. Idaho slices it across. Our Curry off the near boards will dump it in. Januzzi cuts it out behind his net. Januzzi. Fires towards our Curry. It goes past him. It got redirected by our Curry. No icing. 208 count and counting left in the third. Utah's up 5 to 4. Idaho's net's empty. Bice now to Neutris. Pushed ahead. Stapley took it away, but he glanced off his stick on a Merchant, who lifts it in. Murphy over towards Merchant. Cuddle up across to our Curry. Right side, lefty shot is blocked. Our Curry gets a back shot. That's blocked again. Grizzlies clear it out. Cuddle chasing after it. Cutler closes the gap. Cutler slices it towards our Curry near side. 140 and counting left in the third. Smoke him if you got him. Utah's up 5-4. to four. Right wing pass to near him. He steps over the line, skates towards the corner. He gets cut off by Mayhew. As Idaho throws to the right side for Kumatsi. So move it to the left side. As Bice drags around. Lefty shot saved by Januzzi. Rebound shot. is blocked away by Januzzi. Bice far side. 120 left in the third. Across our Curry near circle. He gets up top to Harsh. He'll take a righty shot that goes over the net. It bounces off the glass. Berg trying to clear it out. It bounced up our Curry. As Utah gets up, or Ido gets up top. Harsh over to Kawaguchi. Far side shot is blocked. 105 left in the third. Ido up top to Harsh. Right side. Utah's up 5 to 3. As one minute's left, our Curry fires towards the net. Gets redirected. Shot saved by Januzzi. Now Cutler gets it far circle. He'll backhand it towards the empty net. He's got 31 goals this season. Icing's going to be called on the Grizzlies as Cutler just missed the net along the near side. 50.9 seconds left in the third. Even the fans will like to head for the exits earlier, staying throughout. Another fantastic finish here at Maverick Center. It's the Grizzlies five and the Stillheads four. Idaho's net is still empty. It's been empty for the last two minutes. Draws on the far side. A.J. White will take it for Idaho against Cole Gallant. Idaho wins the faceoff. Far side, Kudla over to Mastro Donato. Back to Kudla, high slot. He'll move it to his left for Kawaguchi. Trying to fire towards the net. Bounced off the Mayhew. Now taking it is Gallant. He'll bounce it off the far boards. It goes out to center ice. Idaho tags back up. 35 seconds left. Mastro Donato whips it around the boards. Far corner. Naram has a glance off his stick. Grizzlies get it. They try to clear it out. It's gloved and dropped by Kudla in the left point. He'll throw it towards the middle for Kumatsis. He's in the high slot. Right wings it towards Mastro Donato. He'll take a righty shot that's wide. 20 seconds left. Cudla over to Kumatsis. One timer goes wide. 15 seconds left. Wide up top. Cutler has a one handed off his stick and out of the zone. 10 seconds left. Idaho's at neutralize. Masher Donato to the right. Eight seconds left. He'll throw it. Fitz gathers it. He fires towards the empty net. Four seconds left. And he misses just wide. Icing is called with 2.3 seconds left in the third. Boy, Fitz was millimeters away from putting this game on ice. It's 5-4 Grizzlies. Draws give me the Grizzlies zone. As Hunter Mottinger gets a puck from the scores table. Idaho's going to use their one timeout. They want to keep the same six-man unit on the ice. Basically, they're going to have to win the faceoff directly, win it cleanly onto a stick for a one-timer to tie it up. That's the only option Idaho really has with 2.4 seconds left. As Ryan can ask which Grizzlies head coach will talk with his unit. What a thrilling game. This has been at Maverick Center. For my money, it's the best rivalry in the league. The goal that's made the difference here is a Luke, Mar Luke Manning. Power play goal, 13-44 into the third with Mick Messer and Adam Berg gain the assist. Both teams are two for five on the power play tonight. Idaho has outshot Utah 13-7 in both the second and third periods. But the Grizzlies could come away with the two standings points, and they're certainly critical. Rapid City leads Allen 5-3 with four minutes and 59 seconds left in the third. Kansas City won 4-2. Tulsa won 3-1, so the Grizzlies would still be two points behind Tulsa for third. But barring an Allen comeback victory, the Grizzlies will jump two points more ahead of Allen. It would be six points ahead of Allen for fourth place in the Mountain Division. Drop, one by Utah. Fitz clears it out to center, and that will do it. Grizzlies win! Grizzlies win 5-4, to four, and there is no 
doubt about it, as they get their first victory against Idaho at home this season. And Luke Manning is the hero as he scores his first professional goal on a power play, 13-44 into the third. It was a very balanced scoring attack by the Grizzlies. They got one goal and one assist from Mick Messner as fans breathe a sigh of relief. Ido had pulled their goaltender with three minutes left in regulation, but the Grizzlies hold strong. Dante Januzzi gets the victory in net as he had to be solid in the final frame. He stopped 11 of 13 in the third period as he picks up his team leading 13th win of the season. Big victory for the Grizzlies. They certainly needed it as they ended a three-game losing streak. And with the win, and if Allen doesn't come back against Rapid City, they will be six points ahead of the Americans in fourth for fourth place in the Mountain Division. Grizzlies have six games left in the regular year. Four of them will be here at Maverick Center. You're going to want to make sure to get your tickets for tomorrow night. If it's anything like this one was, we're in for a thriller. Final score, Utah 5, Ido 4, and Luke Manning with his first professional goal, 13-44 into the third period. He is the hero for the Grizzlies tonight. We'll come back in 30 seconds. We'll give you the three stars of the game, and we will also um, recap this one. As Grizzlies end the three-game losing streak, they get a victory 5-4 to four here on a Friday night. This is the Grizzlies Hockey Network. At Black Bear Diner, you always get more. More choice. More amazing food. More value. From huge breakfasts to delicious lunches and hearty dinners, Black Bear Diner has more for you. So get more when you want it, the way you want it, and get it today. Good old-fashioned family food, Black Bear Diner. Black Bear Diner. Final score here from Maverick Center. Grizzlies five and still heads four. The third star of the game is Idaho's Francisco R. Curry. They will announce Cole Gallant here for entertainment purposes here at Maverick Center. Gallant scored his 12th of the year, 58 seconds into the third period. He had a beautiful goal, and it's one of those that should be the league's goal of the week. You know, they have the plays of the week that they show every week on the league's website, and Gallant's goal really should be one of the three top plays in the week. His speed and playmaking ability is certainly outstanding. So Gallant listed as the third star for entertainment purposes here at Maverick Center. The real number three star is listed as Francisco R. Curry, who scored two goals. Number two star is Mick Messner. He ended the night with one goal and one assist. He was a minus two, but he had four shots, and both of his goals were on the Grizzlies' power play. Number one star is first as a pro, Luke Manning, and it turned out to be a game winner. What can you say, Manning? We'll toss the T-shirt into section 113, make that 115 into row one. Manning's the guy that's going to be a pretty good pro. He was signed by the Grizzlies a few weeks ago. And actually, it was March 15th, to be exact, that he signed. Earlier this season at the University of St. Thomas, he had seven goals and six assists in 37 games. Manning had 24 goals in his U of St. Thomas career, which lasted three and a half seasons. Before that, he played at the Air Force Academy in the 2019-2020 season and had eight goals in 35 games. As the game winner was a shot taken from the far circle. I couldn't tell. It, it, it was... Um, Looked like uh, Messner took the shot, and it bounced off of Kylie, and then Manning got it, and he kind of finessed it over Kylie. It was one of those that wasn't a fastball onto the uh, Idaho netminder, just kind of finessed it over his shoulder and into the back of the net. The, Gra the Maverick Center crowd went nuts, and they continue to go nuts um, here as they finally have headed for the exits. Luke Manning's a hero. And what a great time to pick up your first pro goal. Now, remember in the military night miracle, Grizzlies got that overtime power play because Luke Manning got a breakaway and, and Norfolk, who was bank checking on the play, just did what they could and committed a penalty to make sure Manning uh, couldn't get a shot off. Now, that would have been a dramatic game-winning goal. This one's just about as good. It's not overtime to complete one of the greatest comebacks in team history, uh, but uh, getting the game winner against the arch rival, Idaho still heads in a game the Grizzlies desperately needed. And with Allen... Falling behind 5-3 to three late in the third period. It looks like Rapid City has added a goal late in the third. It's now Rapid City 6, Allen 3. 
which means that uh, Rapid City will now be tied for fifth place with Allen, and the Grizzlies will be six points ahead of both Allen and Rapid City, a top fourth place in the Mountain Division. And they also needed the victory if they want to climb to third place in the Mountain Division because Tulsa took care of business, defeating Wichita 3-1. to one. So the Grizzlies are still two points behind Tulsa for third place in the Mountain Division. Let's recap the scoring. The Grizzlies scored the first two goals of the night. They are now 11-0 and at home when scoring, uh, when uh, leading after one. They are 16-0-1 at home when scoring first. I know there's a lot of numbers out there, and we apologize for that, but uh, Grizzlies have been outstanding protecting leads here at Maverick Center. And even though it was kind of a roundabout way of doing it, the Grizzlies did protect their two-goal first period lead, uh, eventually at least. I mean, Idaho did tie up a couple times. Uh, Brett Stapley got the Optum first goal of the game, 344 in. He picked up his 23rd of the year. Luke Manning and Brandon Cutler got the assist. A minute and 11 seconds later, 455 in. It was Tyler Penner getting his 10th of the year with Dylan Fitz and Aaron Aragon getting the assist. Idaho responded less than a minute later, 527 into the first. Francisco Arcuri scored his first of two goals on the night. Ty Pelton Bice picked up the assist. 1424 into the first, Will Merchant got his eighth of the year with the Wade Murphy and Ty Pelton by scheme the assist. That was on a power play, 1424 into the first. Score was tied at two. After one period, both teams had 11 shots. In both the second and third periods, Idaho outshot Utah 13 to seven. The only goal scored in the second was a power play tally by Mick Messner, who picked up his 15th of the year. Kyle Mayhew got his 16th power play assist of the season. Utah led 3-2 to two after two periods. Grizzlies at home when leading after two. Now have a record of 13-1. and one. Cole Gallant gave Utah some much-needed insurance 58 seconds into the third with Adam Berg and Alex Bokaj getting the assist. And that was Gallant skating along the right wing, getting around the Idaho defense and just kind of curling to his left towards Kylie and then firing the backhand shot over Kylie's left shoulder. Glant picking up his 12th of the year, Berg and Bocage with the assist. Still Ed scored a five-on-five goal, 246 into the third as Wade Murphy fired a blast from the far circle. It's his 25th of the year, Patrick Kudla and Nick Kanadi with the assist. Francisco Arcuri scored on the power play, 827 into the third on what I thought was an almost impossible angle from along the near goal line. Januzzi didn't quite protect that near post, and Arcuri just fired it over Januzzi and into the back of the net. At that point, it was anybody's game tied at four. Grizzlies got a power play late in the third period. As Willie Nearham got a cross-checking minor, 12-22 in. It was late in the power play. Messner had the puck in the right side, fired towards Jake Kiley, the Idaho goaltender. It bounced off of Kiley. Manning got the rebound. And as we mentioned before, didn't kind of fire it directly into Kiley. Just kind of finessed it right over his shoulder and into the back of the net for Manning's first as a pro, as we mentioned earlier. He had seven goals at the University of St. Thomas earlier this season. And uh, what a time for his first pro goal against the arch rival Stillheads in a big game late in the regular season. Manning with the goal, Messner, and Berg with the assist. So Adam Berg had an assist in each of Utah's two third-period goals. Grizzlies did a great job holding on to the lead, even though Idaho um, pulled their goaltender with three minutes left in regulation. The Stillheads really had the puck in the offensive zone for most of that three-minute stretch. Uh, Grizzlies just held strong, though, and Dante Januzzi made the big saves when he needed to the most, stopping 36, uh, or stopping uh, 33 of 37 as he comes away with the win. His record goes to 13 and 16 on the year. Jake Kiley of Idaho gets the loss. His record drops to 8 and 5 on the season. In terms of scoring chances, the Grizzlies had seven in the third period. Grizzlies had seven shots in the third period. All of them were considered to be scoring chances by the off-ice officials. Idaho had 13 shots in the third period, and four of them were considered scoring chances. For the game, Grizzlies 17 scoring chances to Idaho's 15. It was a very evenly played game. Both teams had two power play goals. And for the Grizzlies, it really was a gut check. You know, you talk about this being a much-needed game to end a three-game losing streak. You know the schedule is going to be tough here throughout the rest of the regular season playing Idaho and Kansas City. Idaho is resting Matt Register tonight. Um, I don't know that that made a huge difference. The other defensemen for Idaho stepped up and, and uh, were pretty active tonight. For the Grizzlies, 
you knew you needed contributions from just about everybody. Um, you know, Manning and Messner each had one goal and one assist. Berg ended up with two assists, but it was really a balanced attack. You know, Grizzlies got goals from five different players. Berg was the only one that had a multiple assist game. Um, you know, you're really talking about that team effort. And, you know, with Idaho, they carry three pretty good forward lines, and their extra forwards are also a scoring threat. So, you know, their defensemen are also threats on the ice. And so if you're going to beat Idaho, it's going to have to be a team effort, just as the Grizzlies – uh, put forth here tonight. Um, yeah, I just kind of noticed based on all the preparation that both Ryan Kanaswich and Christian Horn, the Grizzlies coaching staff, put together here tonight, you can kind of, you, you could just tell the, you can just feel the in- intensity, you can feel the meaning of this game. And with Allen falling apart here late in the regular season, they lose six to three to Rapid City. The Grizzlies are six points in front of Allen and Rapid City who's now tied with Allen with the two victories earlier this week. Rapid City's now won four in a row. Um, we saw them beat Utah twice last week at Idaho at uh, the Monument, and this week uh, Rapid City won in the first two games against Allen. You know, Rapid City's a hot team, and they're six points behind Utah as Allen and Rapid City are now tied for fifth place in the Mountain Division. It was also big because Tulsa won tonight 3-1, to one, so the Grizzlies stay two points behind Tulsa for third place in the Mountain Division. Uh, Kansas City, regardless of what happens the rest of the year, and Kansas City got a victory tonight. Uh, they will be the one seed in the Mountain Division. Idaho will be the two seed uh, for the Grizzlies. I mean, obviously, you know, toss a coin. You're just glad to be in the playoffs, whether you're playing Kansas City or Idaho. Uh, we'll get a look at Tando Hats, Kansas City Mavericks here next week. But, you know, one thing's for certain, you know, for the Grizzlies who have had a bit of a struggle here in this particular building against, against uh, the Idaho Steelheads over the last couple of years. They certainly needed to get the monkey off their chest and off their back to, you know, just try to find a way to, um, you know, um, you know, break even in the season series with Idaho. The Grizzlies have now won three of the first 11 meetings between the Stillheads, and uh, I'm not making any sense right now. I just know it's a big win for the Grizzlies as they get a 5-4 to four victory, and Luke Manning gets his first professional goal and is the hero here tonight. Once again, the three stars officially, Francisco Arcuri of Idaho is the third star. He had two goals. Mick Messner and Luke Manning each had one goal and one assist, but with Manning getting the game winner, he's the number one star, and Mick Messner is the number two star of the night. Well, it's going to be a big one tomorrow night. It's going to be the rubber match. Idaho won 6-2 to two on Wednesday. Grizzlies come up with a 5-4 to four victory tonight. We'll see who wins the series tomorrow. 6.50 pregame show, 7.10 faceoff. We want to see a big crowd here at Maverick Center for the Saturday night showdown. Remember, after tonight, Grizzlies just have four games left in the regular season at home, six games overall. Um, tonight, uh, you know, tomorrow, Grizzlies will face Idaho, and then next week, a three-game set against the Kansas City Mavericks. Well, that will wrap things up once again in two hours and 23 minutes and in front of a good crowd of 6,333 63-33, it was a balanced attack by the Grizzlies. The game winner was scored by Luke Manning on the power play, 13-44 into the third. Dante Genuzzi gets the victory, stopping 33 of 37. We'll come back tomorrow night for the rubber match, 6.50 pregame show, 7-10 faceoff. Hope you enjoyed the broadcast. I know a lot of Grizzlies fans enjoyed the final outcome. I'm Tyson Whiting, and it is what it is. You've been listening to the Grizzlies Hockey Network, presented by Rio Tinto Kennecott.